Hey, this is Jim McDonald. Welcome to episode 118 of the PowerCast. This episode is Chris Bell. Chris was in town for his birthday, and so we dragged him on the show to talk about uh, he's finally having a release date for Prescription Thugs, his new documentary. It's actually coming out in January. And if you look up above me right here, you'll see a little thing that rolls out that shows you what the trailer looks like. So click on that. Come back after you watch everything. Click on that, and you can watch the trailer and see what Prescription Thugs is all about. Um, we also talked about a strongman documentary that he's working on and a lot of other stuff because, you know, when Chris is in the house, we talk about a lot of stuff, but it's fun, so enjoy it. Our sponsors for this episode, as always, HowMuchYouBench.net, ThePowerMagazine.com, CavemanCoffeeCO.com, which is right there, <coughs> Rogue Fitness at ThePowerCast.com slash Rogue, Compex USA at shopcompex.com. And we'd like to welcome Eight Man Strong. You guys are probably seeing Eight Man Strong. You guys have probably seen Eight Man apparel all over the place in powerlifting and uh, definitely all over the place on Instagram. Uh, this company was started by a couple of brothers and they talked to us back in uh, February at the LA Fed Expo about how some of the things that were said on this show early on helped inspire them to get started. So it's great to have them on uh, as a sponsor. So check out their website, it's eightmanstrong.com. And now without, oh yeah, all the YouTube stuff, why do I always forget that? YouTube stuff, likes, shares, subscriptions, you guys are responding and I always appreciate it. Thank you very much. And now on with episode 118. <laughs> Live at Super Training Gym in West Sacramento, California. This is Mark Bell's PowerCast. Alongside Silent Mike and Jim McD, here's your host, Mark Bell. That guy sounded fat. Didn't that guy sound fat? It was just He was he is fat. Yeah. I already I exploded. Know. He's not here anymore. Yeah, he's in San Jose trying to be a doctor or some shit. I'm never going to let Imagine that guy touch in, me. Walking in and seeing a guy all hairy, like, oh, yeah, I got yeah. <laughs> to fix you. What's your problem? Spinal. <laughs> Spinal. <laughs> I broke my back. Spinal. So we got my brother here on the podcast today, and I just, uh, hey. by a show of hands out there, I'd like to uh, know who would like to see him choke slammed right <laughs> through this goddamn table and put finally out of his goddamn misery. I didn't know we were live, but I see a thousand hands. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, I don't really see I a lot of hands up there. A sea of hands, perhaps. <laughs> I got some pow Sour Patch Kids shit's ready to go off on this motherfucker. When does this shit drop next week? This week? Next week. Next week. What shit? This, this shit. This podcast? That hot shit. Hey, I know. Yo, speaking of oh. hot shit, you said hot shits are gross, but why does every rapper bring that hot shit? What? You've never heard rappers say, like, I got I that hot shit. I don't listen to enough. November to not, 4th or November 11th? 11th. Mm. 11. That hot shit. Happy November 11th. 11. Happy birthday, Chris. I mean, I could switch yeah. the order up, but I mean, who, you Happy know. Happy birthday, Chris. My birthday is November 3rd, so this is way past my birthday. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. How was your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yet. It's actually happening on Tuesday. What are you, fucking McFly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's already That's a good movie, yeah? Uh, what, Back to the Future? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, uh, you know. Whoa! Back to the Future's not good? That's a good movie. It's pretty good. All right. It's we, good. We have not been able to afford a flux capacitor, so we appreciate 8 Man Strong jumping on to sponsor and some other people, Rogue Fitness. We need more sponsors to get a flux capacitor. Yes. At least 20 sponsors per flux capacitor. That yeah. shit's not easy Maybe to build. Maybe start a GoFundIt. Flux capacitor. Why does everybody do a GoFundIt? What are your flux thoughts on that? Everyone's well, fucking broke. <laughs> Ain't it's nobody got no money. Go nobody wants to fucking work either. But the, the Every time I say go fund me, I'm like, go fuck yourself. But it's always something like, oh, Why can you, fund you, I saw, you fat I, fuck? I know. I saw a guy wanted to get sponsored to, to uh, $2,500 so that he can go to the Olympia. And That's I'm like, great. yeah, but why, not, yeah, why isn't it ever for something awesome? Like, uh, like okay, Silent Mike started a GoFundMe uh, to build a flux capacitor. Then you'd be like, well, oh, I'll give that guy 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's fucking it's always, cool. It's always something stupid. It's like there actually is a lot of people out – there are a lot of people out there that are doing it for, uh, you know, somebody has cancer or something. That's, that's, yeah, yeah, I think that's what, a little different. I think yeah. that's what it's for. Yeah. But yeah, when you fall it. on a one financial those, uh, hardship, I don't think it's for that. Or even one your movie. Uh, rental companies started on there. What, what it's like – I don't even know how to say it, but it's just an abbreviation for something, one of the rental companies. Cars or one what do you rent? Uh, houses, apartments. Oh, oh Airbnb or something? Yeah. 
That started as like maybe. A GoFundMe. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of Kickstarter. People, or something yeah, yeah. Like that. Kickstarter's yeah. a little different, right? That's four businesses, and right. I think GoFundMe's for like Mike needs a fucking well, yeah. pallet of monster. The, the model for Kickstarter has changed. I have a friend. Those sour patches. There's my, a pound my, of sour patches. It's gonna be gone in ten my minutes. My friend Greg Nigro, who uh, who got, you, got he got you guys some of the equipment. Hey, no yeah, well, I don't like think that. we could some say equipment that. Equipment here in the gym. He, his company, <laughs> Vicor. Mm-hmm. They actually had a Go. Uh, it wasn't a GoFundMe. It was a Kickstarter campaign for a new product they had coming out, but they couldn't really afford to. Actually, like go into full production and make right. it. So they they pre-sold it. Yeah, yeah. And they they got like you know sixty thousand dollars to pre-sell their thing. And I think a lot of companies. But he's not asking for now. money, so he has gas to go do a seminar. No, no, no. He's just asking <laughs> to go make money. And if they don't yeah. if they don't get the money, the Let's product go doesn't attend get made. a seminar. Yeah. Mm. What, what kills me about Kickstarter right now is that there's some cool shit, but it's so far away. Like that a, you're gonna that? actually get it in your hands. It's like fuck that. Sure. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I like true. some of the stuff. I, I would buy it right now. Yeah. But I don't want to wait six seven years. years. Yeah, 2020. Yeah. I have a friend that just went on there and he's trying to raise, you know, five hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a movie, and I just think that that's like there's a lot of other ways to get money for a movie. That it's it's too much work. You know, I think that um, there's a film that I'm doing coming up, and we might do a Kickstarter campaign or an Indiegogo campaign to fund like a small part of the film. Yeah, but I think not, to try to get the, whole the, thing. the full thing is just sort of insane. When's the uh, casting call and how do I try out? <laughs> We're do actually, you have a casting we're, couch? We're actually doing a documentary on Strongman coming up, and so far oh, we right, have uh, yeah. MH, MHP is on. What board. are you, a strong guy or something? I'm not strong. What are these I'm strong a, guys or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, you know, I've always liked the uh, watching the world's strongest man uh, competitions, and Mark yeah, yeah. and I have always enjoyed. Uh, watching it. How do we get back to the fucking old school strongman when it seemed like dudes didn't know what the fuck was happening and then also they had guys from like the NFL and shit. They weren't professional strongmen. The professional strongman stuff is awesome. I love watching it. I don't think we'll ever get back to that though. God damn. You want J.J. Watt involved? Yeah, no, I love. I used to love those things. Those I think, are fucking great. I think you do offshoots where you do like the strongest. Ken Patera is in there. I just don't think they'll do it because of liability. Don ever. Reinhold. Imagine, imagine if J.J. Watt rips a bicep flipping a tire. Yeah. yeah, but That's back then they didn't used to care. Like there was well, all there was less money. There was less money, and the guys were probably less regulated. Now, like, well, it was a fucked. big. It was le- before it was a big TV show. That's all yeah. it was. Was a it was a big TV show that they w- would say, okay, the we're singlets. Gonna get- the singlets were on, on <laughs> 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 unbelievable. Yeah. We're gonna get Lou Ferrigno. We're gonna get Franco Colombo, and right. You know, I think Franco Colombo was the one that broke his leg, right? Right. Yeah. And then um, our friend Nathan Jones, who was in Mad Max, the big bad guy. That was a good movie, right? Yeah, Mad Max is awesome. That man. was a good movie. So in Mad Ma- before Mad Max, he was a strong man, and uh, he had broken his arm in an arm wrestling against yeah, yeah, yeah. Magnus von Magnuson. It's a famous, Ver famous. Magnus. Uh, no, it wasn't Ma- was Magnus it? Samuelson. Magnus oh, Samuelson. Samuelson. Yeah. It's a very famous YouTube video. Yeah. Him getting crushed. Yeah, it's disgusting. There's all these He's Magnuses huge. and like yeah. all these Icelandic giants. Yeah. That did dominate you, that sport. Did you see? But uh, that shit was cool back in the day. God damn. See the video of uh, of uh, Half Thor fighting. Uh, oh yeah, that's right cool. cool. Yeah, I, I, he was done like halfway through, third of the way through. He's like, I want to just hug it out and leave now. We don't know <laughs> how Greg big is he still. is. Uh, like we saw him in person at a restaurant mm-hmm. or something. You don't know how big he is until he's up against. Uh, yeah. What's what's um, McGregor, McGregor. one ninety or something? Conor, uh, Conor McGregor is probably one seventy. I think he fights at one seventy. I thought. I always know? say Conor McGregor is going to be a huge movie star. After probably this, so. after this MMA thing is over, he's a he's a huge star. He has it like written all over him like the the way he talks shit and the way he just like his look and the way he yeah. acts he'll be like yeah. the next, he's all fired up he'll be like the next jason statham kind of like that yeah. foreign guy who's got that drives out intangible every movie. thing yeah i could totally picture him being like james bond or something in yeah. the future you know the he, first irish james bond <laughs> yeah, never, i thought never, that was uh, he's never like, fucking know man yeah. he's like mickey the pikey <laughs> i thought that was kind uh, of awesome man watching Snatch. uh watching him on uh, the ultimate fighter and he the almost, way he, him and like cody love almost went at it right yeah but the way he he's he, being like Ali, like yeah, you know, and it's funny because him, him and Uriah Faber throwing jabs back and forth is is pretty funny. But it always seems like Connor kind of has the upper hand, you know. Yeah, and, uh, you know. Well, well, he knows he, how he knows how good he is, yeah. you know. Yeah, and there's you know his next fight is not gonna be not gonna be easy. No. I mean, for him to talk shit and to That's uh, December, be able to back it up will December be a whole other thing, you know. December I think so. That'll be an awesome fight. Uh, Jose Aldo? Yeah. Well, well, yeah. It's not Jose. It's Jose. It's Jose like, is fucking um, awesome. Whatever he is. I guess, he, I guess if you're that badass, you can call yourself whatever you want. I'll, I'll exactly. just, yeah, I'll call him whatever way he wants me to say well, it. Ronda Rousey's November 14th <laughs> yeah, fighting Holly Holm. Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, that we, fight's over before it started. Oh. Yeah. I think. We just had... Uh, Unfortunately, <laughs> Ronda Rousey's so goddamn good. To give it away, we just had... Uh, Halloween yesterday, and I just saw a bunch of pictures of little girls dressed as Ronda Rousey. Oh, that's funny. Cool. Yeah, a bunch of them. 
Yeah, one of well, my. That's uh, cool. She's a good inspiration. My neighbor yeah. was dressed as Uriah Faber. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Girl, guy. Uh, guy. Yeah, he had his little braids going yeah. and just it was walked around with shirt when, uh, off, and he had to. Uriah Faber. Was, he was making fun of. Uh, Connor and Connor McGregor was like, yeah, you look like a 50 year old retired skateboarder. And I was like, that's such a great call. <laughs> I was like, he, awesome. it was he was so unfortunately hilarious. right about uh, TJ Dillashaw leaving uh, Alpha Male before think, it happened. He like I, predicted I, it. I think that he pushed that. You he know may what I mean? have. He, he may was have. like, oh yeah, TJ, he's the only fight for you. You know, you have nobody else to fight. And I don't know. Maybe maybe that sunk in a little bit. Who knows? You know, who knows what happened? Yeah. Well, and I I saw a uh, interview with um, TJ where he said that he just really clicked with Ludwig and yes. and Ludwig and uh, uh, we'll Faber see. don't get along anymore. So yeah. Uriah Faber is like a legend in a sport, oh, though. Yeah. Yeah. Sacramento native, right? Yeah. Native or ben Sacramento and Blair actually yeah, he's on the show this week. Yeah, he's uh, awesome. I know he's here. Uriah Sacramento. Faber's been around forever. And he went to the University of Davis. Yeah, he went to uh, Lincoln High School. No matter what happens uh, with him, he's going to go down as a, a legend of the sport. Oh, yeah. you know? Of course. He was Hall of uh, Famer. They got a bunch of multi millionaire. I mean, obviously TJ has a belt, but they have like Chad Mendes is a stud. Yeah. Joseph Benavides is yeah. a stud. I don't think there were any bad feelings about it. Uh, I mean, it, it sounded like yeah. it wasn't. It was a, a, apparently a very difficult thing. Dif- that happens all the time, TJ. right? Yeah. yeah. It does. Oh, yeah. Snaps, I mean, yeah. it does. Back to uh, Thor for a second. I saw Thor uh, doing some boxing also, and I just think it's fucking awesome that he's got the guts to do either one of those things. I think also, too, with Conor McGregor, it looks like they're just throwing some yeah, body shots Expo. and stuff. Who knows if it's a real fight? And, oh, and he, Thor's he allowed to grab real. a hold of him. Who really knows what will happen? But it is cool to see that MMA can help protect somebody like that well. Yeah. Where he, one guy can be 400 pounds and the other guy can be 170 pounds. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just thought the dynamic of it is cool. But, like, who else has the guts to go do that? I've never seen anybody really do that. I mean, I you think, got Will, um, Cha- Will Chamberlain versus uh, Bruce Lee. We haven't seen anything <laughs> like it since then, you know? I think that um, Half Thor was picked up originally by like the Colts or something like he was trying yeah, I think to play, that's a rumor just like a testament to like how hard the yeah. NFL was I he's think, a great athlete no I think he played pro basketball though over in uh, yeah. Iceland yeah, no matter what the case a lot thinner at the time yeah probably wasn't yeah. as jacked but uh yeah, they were they were all basketball players. Brian Shaw was a basketball yeah, player. Yeah, Bill Bjornsson was a basketball player. There's and it, it seems to be like in that sport, being Bill being Heath. tall and having all that leverage, yeah, is a big advantage. Because if you well, look at like Half Thor and uh, charity basketball game would be sick. Dude, all a those sports, huge guys, a sports one with like yeah. Phil Heath as point guard, yeah. Brian Shaw running fucking post. <laughs> yeah, all the strength athletes. Brian Shaw r- pulling down the rim. Dude, it'd be amazing. It would be I'm fun. sure they could still dunk, play a little bit. Yeah, it'd be sick. I'm trying to think who else in this sport. Chad Wesley Smith playing fucking power <laughs> forward. That'd be gross. He could probably, he could probably <laughs> like he goes up in slow motion. Not that his foot works all right. I mean, he was a thrower. Oh, he's probably yeah. he's yeah. probably still really athletic. Yeah. yeah, he might be able to grab rim or something. It's like three seventy or something. Just squat it, squat a nine fifteen pretty easy. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. Walked out and everything. Yeah. He's the guy that power lifting's was... getting ridiculous. Everybody's so big and everybody's so strong. Yeah. You know, back in the day when we used to lift, you'd have like. There would be like one guy that could maybe do you know nine hundred in a in a squat suit at a meet. The amazing thing though is guys. why though. Well, that's that's the amazing thing is why. Like yeah. how come it? How yeah, come technology? It's I know why. Yeah, because exactly like things things progress. Like everything I don't know progresses. though. I don't know if technology's progress. It's not technology necessarily for powerlifting. It's just the fact that. Uh, uh, you said it one day. You said YouTube. You know, yeah, people, yeah. Yeah. people can watch you guys yeah. lift. Yeah. And they can far exceed right. you guys. Yeah. Like a guy like uh, Brandon Allen told me. He's like, I was watching uh, Bigger, Stronger, Faster, and I thought powerlifting was only something Russians did. Right. And that guy is huge. And yeah. he was just like, you know, I, I decided, like, hey, if Mark Smelly Bell can do it and Chris can do it, then, like, I can yeah, I can try a powerlifting meet. Patch. Yeah, I was going to say our well, boy. Now, uh, now he would kill me. Right. Yeah, our boy <laughs> Hulk, me up and throw me across Hulk the room. smash started just watching SuperTrain.tv. Right. And he squats 800, you know, benches five. Yeah, I like I like to. Yeah, uh, social media is definitely a huge part of yeah. it. Yeah, but it's not technology. I forgot what it was. It's I not think, money. I think it was a tech. It's not money, uh, and it's not like we have camps <laughs> or more knowledge. I just think people are better. That, like overall. technology in a little bit, just because the internet helps spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better but information I, but I mean, faster. It's not like like okay. accelerated learning. Like the the Reebok shoe is a little bit better than a Chuck or something, but it's not making me squat more. No, but better. Right. Rather than there was like, a look te- at, uh, better everything. You know, when they say, oh, that supplement helps just a little bit, or yeah. this helps just a little I, bit. I, when we were growing up, we didn't ha- we didn't even have protein powder. Yeah, but I don't drink any all. protein powder. Yeah, you're not that strong. Well, I'm stronger well, than I was last nah, year. Well, it's easier for you to get to a powerlifting source now than it used to be. Right. You know, yeah. whereas, like, there's, you otherwise, like, Jesse Norris, 
he was lucky enough to have a powerlifting coach as a kid. Right, and his right. uncle owned a gym. The only thing I yeah. ever saw, like if I wanted to learn how to squat or And we were lucky better, we ran into powerlifters at a young age. Yeah, but the only thing we really ever saw was Ed Cohn in Powerlifting USA and Kirk Kowarski in Powerlifting mm-hmm. USA. All we had was a piece of paper that <clears> showed a picture of a guy doing it. Yeah. We didn't have any way of like, you, you had to order a video and the videos from like Louis Simmons were like 50 bucks. Now you could fucking tweet one of these motherfuckers and they'll answer you. Yeah, literally yeah. though, my point <laughs> is just that uh, there was a TED Talk and they talked about uh, track and field in particular. I forgot which race it was, but some race were the times from 1920 to okay. now. <laughs> Don't get into the races here. The human race? <laughs> yeah. Racist. Uh, the times were night and day. Yeah, the guy, it, the, yeah. the guy in the 1920s would have a similar time to Hussein Bolt if or whatever. If he had whatever. the they, same yeah, shoes yeah. and the same track. Maybe right, not yeah. Hussein Bolt because there's right. obviously outliers. But the times were mostly different because of the shoes and they were running on like cement where now they're running on this fancy clay, the wind conditions, the stadium's blocking the wind or some bullshit rather than like powerlifting. As Designer as steroids. That. Yeah. Well, they talked about steroids a little bit, but uh, rather than powerlifting, the only thing like that is squat suits, obviously. Yeah. I think because powerlifting went through a phase where it, it evolved for a long time, and then it went backwards. Yeah, it got too In uh, a huge way different. because, uh, and what I mean by backwards is the raw powerlifting went backwards because the geared powerlifting was taken over. No one was doing Those are two separate things. They're separate forms of strength. Yeah. They, they, got, they are not related to each other. And they got powerlifters eating Sour Patch Kids on uh, exactly. the podcast. It's live on the air. Talk about devolving into nothing. <laughs> I, uh, I had kind of what, what I think is a pretty good uh, insight about powerlifting the other day. I was listening to a, a podcast talking about c- car racing. And it was a particular race where, you know, it's sort of gentleman drivers. It's not anybody. It's no, no team stuff. There's not a lot of um, – there's – almost no prize money associated with it. You might just get a trophy or whatever. And the guy was saying, in races like that, it's all ego. It's completely ego-driven because there's no money in it at all. And that's powerlifting. So the reason that we have you know 45 different federations is that it's all purely ego and everybody has to fucking win mm-hmm. and so they have to create a new federation in which they can win yeah. and somebody else cannot I control got a little them with rules um, there's the silent mic federation we're going to run our first <laughs> yeah. game nice. and uh none of you can compete but me. i think even on a, on a more positive note though the ego side of it is also driving the numbers a little bit where someone right. does exactly. a 915 squat like uh uh, Chad Wesley Smith d- did, and then somebody else is like, "Oh shit, he did that. Walked out. He did that to fucking perfect depth. Like now, I'm going to see if I can fucking do it, or I one day aspire to do that." I right. Don't know. Everybody wants to be the strongest guy. Like wh- whatever level you're at at powerlifting, people go, "Oh, I just do it for fun." They're really aspiring to do the best that they can to get to the get to the top. You know, right. so we look at you look at the guys. You at ain't the top. doing shit for fun. Yeah, and that's no, what you're saying. Yeah, no, I, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, there's nothing fun about it. You're not doing like, it for Instagram oh, likes? Oh, I just do it for fun. It's like, there's no fun in, yeah. in you know. Mike does it for your... likes, because likes equal. Cash money. Cash money, fool. <laughs> What's up now? Uh, yeah. It's all about the green. Greenbacks. It's all about the thumbs up. You get fired What's up, up with about the strong movie? Tell us more about the strong movie. Um, so basically what happened is uh, my friend Justin came to me. And he's like, hey, we should do a, a documentary on. Is he from Boston? Yeah, he's from Boston. Oh, my God. He, uh, now he lives in Tennessee. But he, you know, he's got some good inroads with all these guys and he's talking to these guys. And he said we should do a documentary on this. So we were just trying to figure out, like, what what would the story be? Is it just like go and, you know, talk to a bunch of strong men and mm. show the history of the sport and what it was? And what I uh, came up with with him, which we collaborated on, was sort of like what if we did like a pumping iron like or a, a generation iron uh, in the world of strongman because it's such a cool sport and you see all these guys and they're gigantic and they're really kind of interesting to, to watch, but you have no idea what's behind the scenes with these guys. Yeah, you have they no hate idea. each other or not? Not even if they hate each other, just like they probably, I would imagine they probably all get along pretty well, but like What's who, going on in their everyday lives? What yeah, do they who, do? Who are they? How, how does Brian Shaw like fit in a normal car, and how does he do normal Doesn't. things every day? You know? yeah. how, how do these guys? Uh, how do these guys live, and who are they? And just you know, it's something that I've always admired and looked up to, and it's something that I want to uh, go take a look at and give a, a slice of life to to the whole world. And I think that outside of our community of powerlifting and strongman and CrossFit and all these things. Just the general public is going to be like, holy shit. Like, no. this is this is an awesome film. And the way that we're going to um, shoot it is going to be, you know, is going to make it that way as well. Like, we're going to basically bring in some uh, some really good cinematographers and, and shoot this in a way that's going to be uh, very exciting and, and very uh, just fun to watch. You know, mm-hmm. it's like everything I do is controversial. Well, uh, we dropped out somehow. Hey, hey now. <laughs> 
Are we still? Uh, Did we tracking? all drop out? We might be tracking on there though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're still recording. I don't know what the hell. We just can't hear each other. But we can keep going. Are you uh, I, leading I up to? Uh, are you leading up to any particular event, kind of like Popping Iron, or are you just falling around? Well, it's going to depend on. Uh, we're trying to raise money right now. And depending on uh, sort of like when we get the money is sort of like what we're gonna follow. Yeah, it's figure like, the plan. Yeah, I mean we've been talking about like okay, let's lead up to the Arnold, and uh, we have full access to shoot at the Arnold. And I guess there might be some problems with shooting World's Strongest Man, but I, you know, I, I never look at those things. I never look at the negative things. I always look at like, well, let's just do it the best we can, however we can figure it out. No so no clue. We're we're working on figuring that out right now. Yeah. Yeah, the Arnold's supposed to be uh, one of the best visually. I mean, I haven't really seen any is, live. Uh, actually, the Arnold is stronger. Yeah, it's heavier. As far as everything's heavier yeah. than the World's Strongest Man competition. Well, that's because they're on stage. They only have like 60 feet to work with. Rather yeah. than the World's Strongest Man, you're outside. They have yeah, yards it's crazy. and yards. And, and it's weird how uh, different people are good in different um, different events. Yeah, yeah. You know, they have this uh, giant frame that weighs like 900 pounds, and the guys would pick it up, and they walk up a ramp, and... Uh, I remember, like, the last, I think it was the last Arnold, like, Brian Shaw couldn't do it, and Zavjunas Vickis couldn't do it. But Jerry Pritchett, who's, like, kind of middle yeah. of the pack yeah, all the time. Yeah, but he's a pretty good deadlifter. Yeah, middle of the pack all yeah. the time. He he just took that thing and went right up to the top, and he won yeah. that event. So it's kind of interesting that, like, everybody's good at different Well, it's interesting. Uh, it's to crazy yeah, when some, one guy can't pick it up at all, and another guy runs across the stage with it. Well, Jerry Pritchett deadlifts, like, 925 or something right. crazy. Um, but Brian has done a 975, nine, yeah. Nine seven five nine, you know, something like that with yeah. uh, with straps, you know. Yeah. But What's interesting to me about some of these sports like that, or even CrossFit, or the I don't even know if you call it a sport because the, the activities are different every single time. It's yeah. more of like an event or a competition because like basketball is a sport, right? There's these rules and it's always like that. Powerlifting is kind of like that, even though there is mono lifts and yeah. deadlift bars. Maybe it's yeah. more of a competition. Baseball is always the fucking same. Even baseball is a little weird, right? Because the stadium could matter. Like uh, fucking walls, a different height here. Like, right. That's kind of different. It, and American League versus National right. League. Right. Basketball, football, soccer is always like this, right? It's black and white. Yeah, like right. where this sport, like, uh, oh, there's overhead pressing. Fuck it. I'm not going to that competition. Right. I suck at overhead pressing. Well, yeah. This yeah. one has a yoke. I own it's yokes. It's more of a cumulative thing. Like that, they add up the points just like CrossFit or anything else. So like, I think it is a sport, but it's like it's just a different type of sport where the, there's all these – different little competitions that lead up to one big title. But what I mean is, like, uh, World's Strongest Man... Uh, pow- um, it's hard to compare one year to the next if they what, do different yeah. things. No, yeah, even one competition to the next, because, like, uh, Yoke is kind of known for strong man or farmer's carry, but there could be a strong man competition and there's no Yoke right. or farmer's carry. The argument against that would simply be that a lot of times you're seeing multiple-time champions. Like, in CrossFit, you have, uh, you know, Rich Froning won four years straight. So if things are that vastly different, then how did he win four years straight? You know, sometimes They'll say, oh, this one's curtails to this guy a little bit more. This one was custom made yeah, for yeah, this yeah. guy. I'm just saying potentially yeah. it could be. Like yeah, we yeah, could have yeah, a yeah. strongman competition here and all it is is it could be close grip bench there's, right. and there's really, 500 for – There's really good stories within um, strongman too how these guys – you know, we were talking about like it being ego-driven, but how these guys got into the sport. Like Brian Shaw was uh, – I think he was going to play at Arizona State or something like Basketball that. Basketball or something like and, that. And he went to a um, – Strength and conditioning seminar, and Bert Soren was there from Sor- you know, this guy that started. Soren X. Is he the father? The what's the father's name? Uh, I don't. I don't know the difference between the two names. Yeah. So, um, so <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the father, the older yeah. one, with the mustache. He, yeah, with the big mustache. He he was there, and um, they had a uh, Thomas Inch dumbbell, which is a three inch thick handle. Right. Uh, it's like a Coke can. Handle. Three inches. That's pretty big. Hey, huh? hey now. <laughs> And um, beer can three inches around diameter. Yeah, and uh, it weighs 172 pounds. And they said like only six people have ever like been able to grab this and put it over their head. So I think Brian Shaw came along. This article is actually in the New Yorker if you want to look it up. Brian Shaw came along and grabbed it and picked it up over his hand and it was over his head and sort of was like, well, what's so hard about that? Yeah. And at the time he was uh, you know six eight three fifteen. Now I think he's four fifteen or four twenty. Yeah. yeah. And it was like basically the guy. You know, chased him down. Said, "What are you doing? You have to do." You know, hails going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, like screw football. It's like, like he picked up doing, Thor's basically. hammer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, what? What's the big deal? You know. Yeah. So that's how Brian got into it. And then if you look at, um, if you look at like Half Thor Bjornsson, he was like in, into basketball, but he was also really strong. And yeah. you know, when basketball sort of gave up, he got into it. Uh, Eddie Hall said that he was, um, when he was six years old, he was watching it with his father, and he said. I'm going to do that one day. And it kind of reminds me of our brother, Mad Dog, who, when he was six years old, my dad brought him to a wrestling event. Yeah. Said, uh, one day I'm going to do that. So he said, uh, you know, f- fast forward 25 years or however long it was, 20 years, and he was uh, sitting at Christmas at, in his 
in his house in, in England, and there he is on the world's strongest man because they pre-tape it, and he's watching it with his parents, and his parents are both crying, and he's crying and watching it. And, said, and then he's like, but I'm going to win one day. One of these days I'm going to win that because he didn't win. You uh-huh. know? So he, he's done really well, but he hasn't won yet. So that's like a really good story. Yeah, he's pretty goddamn fired up. I wouldn't put it past him. He's amazing. I mean, he looks like a, to me, he always looks like a James Bond bad guy with that scar yeah. down yeah. his eye. He has like this awesome look. He's just a, and he, he's got a personality too. He's really interesting to listen to. And What's amazing about Strongman seen. is uh, the hurdle that you have of, of even just participating in it. Like even just figuring out how to do it. Like It's uh, not very common. Yeah, it's not very common. So to even try to find somebody else that does it is kind of hard. You can go to like CrossFits and you can find yokes and you can find some different things. You can find some farmer implements or you can use dumbbells or, or whatever. Make them yourself or find somebody to make them for you. A lot of the gyms what, are like in people's garages. And yeah. Stuff. But yeah, what freaks me out is uh, like just imagine if, if the hurdle for you to let's say go swimming in the morning was you had to open up you know you had to open up the gate unlock it you had to clean it you had to you know get the ph balance all right and everything before you swim right that's like the what these guys are doing they're getting these like these fucking sharp gigantic metal and rock and all these things out of these storage sheds yeah, that's probably so annoying like oh oh we got to use the stones say oh well it's behind the farmer's carry and it's behind that and it's behind that and it's behind that it's like even the act of like getting the shit out of the shed and being able to train even, with it even it's fucking hard yeah, even to find the right barbell for me right now to put it on the rack I want to use is so annoying sometimes. Yeah. I gotta walk across the gym like fuck which barbell. Think about am if I you walk like, in and, and 405 so is 405 is uh, left on the squat rack that you yeah. want to use. Yeah, you gotta so change annoying. the weight. You gotta yeah. change the bar. You're yeah. like fuck that. I'm just going home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, it's uh, it's funny because uh, we went to me and my buddy Leland. Who's Some here. of these motherfuckers have the uh, co- the Conan wheel. I've seen them do it yeah. in. Uh, in a fucking cul-de-sac. <laughs> the fucking a Conan wheel. You know that thing where you carry yeah, it like yeah. a Zercher squat and you're fucking walking? It? It's like unbelievable. Who the fuck bring, drags that out on a Saturday so, morning? So me and Leland went to that place, Boston Barbell, in Attleboro, where he's from. Oh, that kid's got everything. And Everyone said that place is dope. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like a little tiny garage, but it has like everything in it. You know, it's probably about the size of the old super training. And... Um, he had all these strongman implements. He had like the, you know, the Atlas stones and all these things. And by the time me and Leland left, we were trying out all the things. You know that giant thing that's shaped like Africa, that big stone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just odd object. The Atlas we're, stone or whatever. Yeah, we, uh, no, it's, uh, it's I, like, I think it's oh, called Roosevelt a, stone. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just yeah, like so odd we're, object. We were carrying that thing, and yeah. we were both so bloody yeah. when we got done. I was like, and, and it was, you know, it's really hard. And Leland's huge. He's like 6'8", you know, 300 That's pounds. the guy I'm going to dunk on, right? Yeah, you're going to dunk on him. <laughs> so he he picked it right up. It was pretty easy because he had a good leverage. He picked it yeah. right up. For me, I was holding it, and it's like smashing me in the dick the whole time. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it was extra fun. Yeah, <laughs> really a lot of fun but i mean we left there we were all bloody and we're like fuck that sport man that, that's like so hard you know i can't imagine how these guys are able to do it and they do it with such ease yeah something like i would have to do in high school like high school you have a different mentality like i don't give a fuck if my shins are beat up like even now in powerlifting i wear like a sleeve on my uh <laughs> ankle because i don't want to fucking scratch up final, on deadlift in the finals of the world's strongest life. man brian shaw's picking up these uh 300 pound stones and putting them up on these uh you know on these barrels yeah and he's doing it like it looks like it's a basketball it's like <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. just puts it and it's it's like the the technique and the and the size and the strength is so kind of amazing. Yeah, and the then, speed at which they do it. And you see him do it, and then you see I think like Eddie Hall kind of bombed out on it. He could actually be shorter. He was like pretty could much could have won, mm. but he flubbed a couple of them. And we see when they drop it, how heavy it actually is. What about when yeah. they throw the kegs over top of that fucking amazing. thing, it's like yeah. You know, Brian Shaw makes it just look like it weighs nothing. Must have been great in uh, high school, throwing a keg, you know, finish a keg, just throw it over the woods. (laughs) Yeah, just chuck it. Find it. Chuck it in the deposit on that. (laughs) Chuck it in the outer space. I'd be great if if you were a cop and come and throw your kegs away. Yeah, exactly. So, how long will it be to? work to work on this uh, movie how long do you think it's going to take you know all these things take forever that's how i've been kind of quiet about like really talking about it because yeah. i like to just uh have it come out you know <laughs> here right. we go boom and all right well you got uh, something else coming out right you got prescription thugs coming out prescription thugs comes out january 22nd and um you know that was a that any was any idea where it's going to be released or is it just is that just like a debut of it january or? 22nd will be released worldwide so it'll oh be worldwide on itunes it'll be also be in 10 cities uh theatrically and, you know, that movie was an awesome experience for me because it got me sober. It got mm-hmm. me, you know, to a place that I thought I would never uh, get to. So I've been a year and a half sober now. Wait, like, this is you sober? Yeah. yeah Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. A little, a little, <laughs> what are we getting into? A little monster. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about you it. know what uh, cities? Just major cities probably? San probably Francisco, major, L.A. Yeah, major cities like Sacramento. Poughkeepsie. You know. yeah, yeah. Stockton. Yeah. They'll hit Poe Town. Yeah, Poughkeepsie, sure. maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. 
you know, all those major cities. Wherever Pfizer's located. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. People are like, aren't you worried that you'll, you know, get killed for doing a movie like this? And like, to me, I, like that would be the best thing that could ever happen against prescription drugs. It's like, oh, they killed the guy that made the movie. You know? Yeah. People are like, you're crazy. And I'm like, what? Who cares? Fuck it. You know? Like, I, I wanted to kill you before the podcast. Yeah, though. no. Yeah, exactly. They think that prescription... See, that would, be, that would be for no reason. Oh, okay. They think this prescription thugs mafia is going to come kill you or something? Yeah, that's what they think. Really? There's actually a woman in the movie where I say, uh, she was a pharmaceutical rep, and now she speaks out against him. I said, aren't you afraid they'll... Aren't you afraid that they'll kill you? And she said, "No, I'm afraid they'll kill you and you and you and you, and I'll still be sitting here screaming from the mountaintop." That, yeah, you know, no. nobody will be listening to me. Yeah, yeah nobody will be listening. Yeah, all my credibility is gone because these. The I just posted are... on Instagram today. My mom uh, <laughs> went to the doctor and she got. A, I saw that. And she got a great. prescription, right? And they, they, it's for. Um, it's actually for like metformin, you know. But that can do a lot of stuff to your blood Carbohydrate sugar. Carbohydrate partitioning, yeah. basically. Yeah, actually, I was oh. like, give me some of that. I mean, yeah, shit, exactly. You know. Yeah, it's used by bodybuilders and stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Dan <laughs> Body Shane. composition. Dan Shane used to you talk about metformin all the time. So she got this thing, and the doctor, she's like, is it safe? And the doctor's like, oh, absolutely, it's safe. Just here, get the drug and read the insert. She opens up the insert, and it's the size of, like, a beach towel. It's as yes. tall as she is. Yeah. And, well, and I'll then, throw this picture in on the video. Yeah, and then, and then she flips it around, and it's, like, front and back, <laughs> all this information about this drug, and it's all technical, and you can't understand it. Right. You know, so that was a prescription thugs moment Mom, for me. did it's you like, get me my metformin? <laughs> yeah. I got to take my pulse workout. Yeah, exactly. So your mom's trying to get jacked? I don't know what she's trying to do. I think she's trying to uh, regulate her blood sugar for some reason, you know? Yeah. Just, you know, like to live? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Some, some sort of diabetic, you know, problem. Something or other is going on. Yeah, you know? Yeah, you know, I used to think that those things were actually written by, like, some third party and they're not. They're all written by the pharmaceutical companies. Oh no! And all the medical journals are written by the pharmaceutical companies. Right. So when you when you have people reference to go, oh, I got this information from the New York, you know, from the New England uh, Journal of Medicine. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. that's written by the pharmaceutical companies. So it's really hard to find unbiased information. Yeah, people talk about I don't know the PDR. It's the physician's desk reference. It's sure. just all of those inserts. Yeah. Published in yeah, one basically. book. Yeah. Well, I don't even know if they're I know, um, a book anymore. The but. drug company Merck had a book like this thick and it's a pharmaceutical. I think that's what it is, right? Yeah. Is it, so uh, uh, you can go through and find out like if you have a disease or a problem, like what drug you should take. Right. And that's, exactly. Yeah. That's that book and it's written by Big Pharma. You exactly. know, so it's hard to find. And it's, same, it's the same with the um, psych meds. The psych meds, they have like a... Um, they have a book for uh, psychiatrists and psychologists how to treat people, and it's just a book that basically tells you, um, you know, they, they don't know they don't know enough about the brain to be able to prescribe you medicine for your brain that they know they don't know shit about my brain that they know exactly what it's going to do. Right. So it, you know, with that stuff, it gets kind of dangerous. Well, and the, the problem is, I think that people are not regu- not you know, they're not being watched enough. They're not connected enough to a support system. So when they start having different side effects from these psych drugs then you know they can fall off the rails very quickly and, yeah and i think it know. works for some people some people yeah. will take it and they, they just say you know you'll see a guy go crazy and i'll be like well, what happened to him like oh he's off his meds so the meds actually you know will definitely suppress a lot of feelings which i don't think is good but if that works for somebody from going crazy then i guess it's good you know yeah you said this movie so helped uh, save your life why is the movie important for other people to see I think a lot of people are uh, just blind to the fact, you know, you go to a doctor and they prescribe you something and you take it. And I've actually uh, myself been looking for other other ways to fix things. Uh, you know, I, b- through this movie, I think that people will start searching out th- their own information, start searching out answers and other things you can do. I just went to the a doctor. Silent Mike mentioned shoving stuff up his ass earlier. <laughs> that was called uh, blooping. <laughs> blooping. Yeah, no, that's that's, not, you, that's not involved. You that's don't, not what I'm talking about. You don't. Okay, you don't recommend that. <laughs> no, I don't recommend oh, okay. blooping at all. <laughs> doctor Bell doesn't recommend blooping. No, no, but I, you know, uh, I I went to a doctor the other day, and he said what you need is a full body MRI, and so that's five hundred and twenty dollars to get the full. You know, because I have arthritis in my knees and my hips and my what? ankles and all those things. You got that inflamed so dick. I think it's like seven hundred dollars actually for that MRI. And so of your whole body. My buddy That's Jimmy awesome. Jimmy Bluff, who worked on you, and comparing it to what other MRI? Yeah, what, what body? Is, like, my, oh, my, oh, hey, guess what? You're fucked. My buddy, who does <laughs> uh, does like uh, advanced muscle reconstruction, he calls it. It's like you know body work. He just said to me, well, "What are you, What are you going to do? You're going to go in and get that MRI, and then do what? They're just going to get have permission yeah. to give you surgery. So if you're in pain, you know we can we can work on that. There's other things that we can do, and there's a lot of people out there that can do a lot of stuff like ART and massage therapy, and a lot of things that can help uh, get you out of pain. And it's like not always permanent." 
but I think it's like good to search for other solutions because a pill is always just going to be a band aid. It's not. It's not a cure for anything. Right. Yeah. I think. Uh, I there, think there's no, no. No. No medicine is really a cure except for vaccines, and the vaccines are basically. Uh, you know, they're, they're they, they, subsidized by the government. You know, and vaccines make your body. They create, give you, yeah, give, give they it give the ability you a to fight. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's cliche, but it's true, right? You, we need to uh, fix what's going on rather than just it's try very, to mask yeah. the problem. Right? It's very cliche, but people like to mask the problem. Right. Um, <clears throat> but I, I don't know what you would want to know from a full body MRI. Like I, I saw the other day that there's a new blood test that they think will be available in the next, you know, five years or so. Well, they'll be able to detect 97 percent of of cancers. Oh. So, like from a drop of blood, they'll wow. find out if you have whatever kind of cancer. Mm. Do you want to know that? Yeah. It, Maybe not. It, it, you're asymptomatic. <laughs> Can you I have, do something with it? It's yeah. not changing your life in any way at all right now, and maybe it's not curable. Do you want to know? Yeah. I don't want to know. Yeah, where is it? Well, well I, I think like like, it like I said, like finding finding all like alternative ways uh, to fix things without drugs is probably a much better way to go. Like my back hurts, but like I I weigh too much. My back. You know, my knees hurt. Well, I, I weigh too much. And yes, I have arthritis, and there's ways to fix that through. Uh, surgery, but you know, there's also ways to uh, prolong the surgery and, and make you know so you're living w- without pain and be able to like get to the point where you know maybe if you need the surgery, it's more down the road and not right, right away. You, say, you know, you're saying um, that you're looking for alternatives because it almost took your life in in several different ways. Wait, alternative times. lifestyle? Alternative <laughs> lifestyle? Yeah, I'm looking for an alternative. But uh, lifestyle. are other people? Uh, looking for a, fu- a fucking excuse to be high, like because in your movie it mentions. Yeah, I was. I mean, I, yeah. I was, I was. Uh, it's irresponsible of of people, I think, to blame the pharmaceutical companies too much because in your movie it kind of talks about how restless leg syndrome and some of these weird fucking things that you yeah, get. stop being a pussy. Yeah, well, some of these weird but things. That, hold on, hold on. Some of these weird things that you have happen to you. Uh, those things are marketed, and those they have commercials for those things, but they don't they don't have commercials for oxycotton. No, because it works. Right. You know? Right. It, I know, it actually but really works. So yeah, there was some med last night. I saw and it commercial. is irresponsible the doctor to give, like a kid who comes in, he's got rotator cuff surgery, he's 16, he plays baseball, just to dump you know, some crazy-ass strong drug on the kid. I, I think that is irresponsible and not explaining what it does. And, and Well, now they can give it to 11-year-olds. Yeah. They can give yeah, Oxycontin nice. to 11-year-olds. So Jake, your son is 11. If Jake got hurt in baseball and you didn't know any better right. and uh, he broke his ankle or something, right. say slide into home base, and they give him, you know, he goes home, they give him Oxycontin. Cotton. Well, the pharmaceutical company is saying, well, that's not why we did that. We're doing that for extreme pain for, like, cancer. But we right. all know why they do it because that's going to bleed over into in- sports injuries like that where they're yeah, like, yeah. oh, hey, give them Oxycontin. Imagine your, your kid getting addicted to Oxycontin at, like, a, 11 years old, even if they do have cancer. You know, and, right. yeah, and like they, the, the pharmaceutical company will blast like medical marijuana and say, well, that's not you can't give that to an 11 year old because they did right. that medical marijuana thing for the, the kid that had all the seizures yeah. and they got better. And they don't want you to do that because they don't make money on that. But at the same time, you're talking about with cancer at the same time, there are a lot of doctors that won't put someone who has less than six months to live into a hospice program because they're going to give them drugs for the pain right. and they're going to get addicted to drugs but they're going to die anyway. Yeah, at that point, it doesn't matter, I think. It doesn't you know? matter, right, but, so. but you, you see so much of that. It's ridiculous. I think yeah. there's two different conversations going on. One's like, all right, you break your leg. You need to go to the doctor. Okay, you find out you have cancer. You need to go to the doctor, and something needs to be done. Sure. Whether, whether it's oxycodone or your hip surgery, right? Your yeah. hip's fucked. You have to... And then there's the other side, like, do you have erectile dysfunction? Do you, right. do you have gas sure, and, yeah. and bowel problems? Oh, here's this is the commercial I saw last night. <laughs> you have gas or IBS, yeah, like your during... stomach hurts? Like, yeah, my stomach hurts when I eat a shit ton of ice cream, you stupid fuck. It was like, on during these... the, the World Series, wasn't it? Maybe, yeah. And so these things can be fixed by, like, diet and exercise, hands down. Maybe some cancers can be fixed with diet and exercise. Maybe. Maybe your hip could have been done better. Maybe you were born with it. Who knows? Maybe it's Maybelline. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> The point is, <laughs> is like there is a place for meds, right? You sure. agree? Yeah, that. absolutely. There's a huge place for. And medication. then obviously the the industry, like every other industry, fitness industry, takes advantage of those things. If if you look at it, you pretty much shouldn't be on a drug, some sort of drug every day. And you shouldn't be on you know, ten like of every them. day for the rest of your yeah. life. And like you shouldn't be on, not on ten really of them, right? A lot of drugs that you should be on every day. If you have blood pressure, diabetes, this and that, how do you fix those things? Yeah, Most of those the, things uh, are reversible. The commercial you're talking about is uh, for people that are on opioids, right? Yeah, maybe. Am I saying that right? Opioid drugs, like if you're on a yeah, you. Oxycontin so you're on one like 
drug and they want you to take con- another one. You're constipated yeah. from your pain kit. That's a great yeah, commercial. And then you're on pain meds because you have diabetes and your back hurts because you're fucking fat. And then your fucking hip hurts. I and eat then because I'm sad. I'm sad because I eat. <laughs> you pointed at me. It's, it's, like, a, you're fat. it's a vicious fat. cycle. Yeah. <laughs> fat bastard understands yeah. it. Yeah. It's fat bastard has that shit cycle. down. I quit. But you know, the thing is that you're right. There is two different conversations. There's people that are using drugs because they want to use drugs. Like, they want a quick fix. They want to know. Right. You know, because like, they're oh, pussies, yeah, huh? Yeah, I don't know about that. I, they're marketed too very well. I know? know, but I think there's some people too that like stub their toe and like, fuck, I better oh. go to the doctor. Like, fuck you. But dude. when they came out with restless leg syndrome, I'm like, dude, I have that. I totally have that. <laughs> but the thing is, I was drinking, I was drinking like six shots of espresso. You know, uh, um, Americano, which was six. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you saying Starbucks gave you restless leg well, syndrome? Well, I was drinking it like two hours before Lawsuit. I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> two hours before I went to bed. Of course I have, le- you know, I want to kick somebody in the face. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it's because. That's what restless leg syndrome is? You want to kick someone in the face? Well, no, your legs just I have twitch. that too. Your legs just twitch. So, wh- what about restless dick like, syndrome? Yeah, yeah, I never had that. <laughs> I have that. Yeah, everyone's got Evil erectile dick. dysfunction. That's called blue balls, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Evil dick. Evil That's dick. Called. Yeah. yeah. Well, Evil dick? Know. Yeah, look it up. What about a like not evil dick, like a superhero dick? <laughs> hey now. Oh, you mean like a good guy dick? Yeah, little, I got the good dick. No, condom no, that comes no, with no, no, thing. Does the good my, dick my and the evil like dick Vader. kill the pussy? <laughs> it tries to. Your dick looks like Darth Vader. Yeah. You don't exactly. say. Oh yeah. really? All oh, right. <laughs> Wait, the new Darth Vader is all grizzled. No, who yeah, is that? Absolutely. I don't know. That's like Darth Vader had sex with Bane. That's what do you, what what do you guys think of the new Star Wars? Oh, I'm stoked. We're not Kylo, far enough in the future to Kylo see Kylo Ren. It. Okay, who, Kylo Ren. Who Kylo thinks Ren. it's going to be good? Who thinks it's going to be bad? I don't I, I don't know if it'll be good or bad, but I'm going to fucking love it either way. Here, here's, gonna, here's why I think it's going to not be that good, because I just think there's going to be a lot of like fighting and a lot of fucking uh, the, them fighting with their fucking swords and shit and them shooting laser beams. You don't think the like, story will it'll be, be as quality? Yeah, yeah, two yeah. and a half hours long, so we got to be ready for that. So, I, need, I need more story. I need more feeling behind it. But didn't he write all the sagas at the same Time. Yeah, but I, I think also Lawrence Kasdan was I think part I think of the it's screenplay a for this, and Lawrence Kasdan was part yeah. of the screenplay for Indiana Jones and Empire Strikes Empire Back. Strikes yeah. Back. So uh, that's pretty good. Silverado, one imagine of the best if you westerns wrote, fucking ever. Yeah, so Lawrence Kasdan, they, they have a good shot at making it. Uh, imagine if he wrote the greatest uh, mo- movie trilogy of all time, and then people were like, oh, man, that was so awesome. Do you have any other ones? He's yeah. like, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. Actually, there's three before it and three after it, as a matter of fact. Some people just but quit, But he though. also came up with uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah. You know, that was, that, but that, George Lucas has an amazing And line. Spielberg, yeah. though. And then when he had kids, it was like, okay, now i got to make these movies for my kids, and then they all sucked. Well, yeah. didn't he write uh, these Star Wars in, like, college? Yeah. Yeah, USC. Yeah. Oh. The George Lucas Film School. Whoa! Boom! His, his name's on the building. Yeah. yeah. So you don't think it'll be good, Bor? I think it'll be uh, okay. I think it'll be okay. So the first, the okay. So I'm a fan of all six. Obviously, the old three are by far better films. I like just the storyline. I like sci-fi shit. The the new three, like my generations, they sucked because of the acting. They sucked because of the, even the um, well, no, there's just special like, effects were like the same level, even though yeah. some were in the 70s and these were in like the 2000s. Now, now here's the problem with the with the new ones is that they. The new ones were supposed to be before the old ones. Yeah. And the the very first Star Wars was very basic, very simple. And it should have been back before that, and it should be even simpler, right? But it was way more advanced. It was all like that millions of robots coming down and all these different things. It's yeah. supposed to be, wait, that's supposed to take place before this. Right. Where, I don't give but a fuck about those robots. No, no their story, yeah, th- that's part of the story, though, is that the, the robots were shit and they had to go to clone humans. That's part of the fucking genius. Yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't, I, I didn't think That's it, part of the genius saying that, that uh, technology isn't the, the go-to. Right. You're missing the fucking point. No. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to teach at the USC. Phantom, the Phantom Menace was terrible. It was. It was. That's because really Anakin's movie. a puss. They yeah. made Anakin a puss. That's why. Yeah, and Jar Jar Binks a retard. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't like those uh, prequels at all. I wasn't like a big fan. I really I only them. liked the last one, and I didn't like it that much. The last one's okay, it but when Darth Vader was like in pieces on a volcano or whatever, yeah. it was kind of weird, you know. Some of the stuff's pretty good in those movies. There's some good scenes to each one of them. I think. I just love it because of Star Wars. Yeah, it's not I, a good I, movie. I like some of it too. Yeah. Well, I think the, the new one, it's like it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard to please everybody, right? So, no, everyone's gonna hate it. You think everybody's gonna hate everyone's it? Everyone's gonna hate it. That's just like the new three. That's kind of like you're building up for disappointment, kind of. Everyone. Well, you have actually, an hour. You have an hour of previews coming your way, at least, and then you have a two and a half hour film. Yeah. Most people are gonna be pretty but, restless. But yeah. like, talk about restless leg syndrome. Yeah. The like, kids will hate it because there's a Star Wars cartoon out right now. The kids right now don't even know Star Wars. Yeah. They know yeah. the Star Wars cartoon, That's so they're gonna true. fucking hate it because it's different. Your generation's gonna hate it because it's not the fucking original. I'm, I'm hoping to like it. You're going hipster I, on me, Bor. Yeah. Why? You're gonna hate it because it's not the original. Like, no, 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 no oh, I'm not gonna. 
hate it because it's not the I original. I only liked Eminem when I, you didn't know who Eminem was. I, I, no, I don't. I'm not like that at all. I, I, like, I like the way the new one looks. The it, preview's it, it dope, looks right? A, it's a, looks a lot like the old one. I right. But the latest preview seemed a little weak compared Maybe. to the first. The first, the first preview one was dope. Was kind of awesome, and then the second one was the, it, the newer one. It's like kinda... too much reveal without revealing actually anything at all. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Well, my we'll my see. thing with J.J. Abrams, he was the big Star Wars fan, not a big Star Trek fan, but he's the guy who rebooted, rebooted Star Trek. Uh, a lot of people. Good. First one was good. Second yeah. one was kind of lame. I the didn't second see one the second. sucked balls. Yeah, all those lens flares. If that's yeah, in was... Star Wars, I'm out. Oh, they're uh, they're they're in there. Have you seen them in the trailer? Yeah, I'm out. Um, <laughs> Fucking special effects lens flares. Yeah. Have, well, no, they're not even special. Not even, not all of them are special effects. Couldn't because resist. he's actually like shakes the camera and has somebody stand off off yeah. camera with them. Well, you saw Super 8. That was a good movie. That was yeah, J.J. Was, Abrams. Uh, Super 8 was you know, pretty good. It was, it was only sort of good. It, was it wasn't good. that good. What about really The Martian? It wasn't that good. It ended dumb. The Martian? You didn't yeah. like The Martian? That, that's not J.J. Abrams. I just like The Martian. It was I the like, latest movie I've seen. I like The oh, Martian yeah. a lot. I, you know, everybody else liked it. I didn't like the ending. I liked the movie. I didn't like I the it, I hated the ending. I'm with you on it. I, I he gets a job at NASA and he's like doing a seminar or something. It's like, yeah, what the, the fuck yeah, is yeah. that? The I ignore all that. Terrible. I've been to that. Mars and now I'm going to do a seminar. The yeah, book, what the fuck? The book that. ends with him in the ship. And in fact, he makes a it joke. It should have ended right there, though. But that he was, makes they a blew, joke in the blew, book blew, about, he makes a joke in the book about like, if this was a movie, everybody would be in the in the same room at the same time and everyone would be crying and and, yeah. and laughing and, you know, all this stuff. And that's exactly what they did in the movie. Well, he should have he, he ended like that because that's actually a better ending and it'd be funny and ironic if he said if this was a movie because it is a movie yeah exactly so they, they didn't want to go that they route but him like being funny and like making yeah. no, water out of shit and stuff yeah, yeah. that made yeah. me that entertained me yeah, yeah, him yeah, blowing himself up was great amazing He's like they don't know what they're talking about about the fire I, feel like, and uh, I saw, totally I saw that up. movie and i saw the walk in the same week and i felt like they were comp- like the, they were interesting in that fact that the martian I never saw the walk what is the that? martian was awesome all the way through and then the ending was kind of eh, and then the walk was shitty all the way through and the end was like one of the most Insane things I've ever seen on I film. just can't pay 20 bucks to go to a movie where the preview is someone walking on a tightrope. I'll watch it on DVD. Across the World Trade Center. Center. I know, but yeah. I'm just saying, you know, like, the, I'm like, okay, this is going to be well, really I couldn't watch slow. the trailer in the theaters. I had to turn my eyes away. Yeah, I, I, had, to turn, guy, I had to turn so. away because I saw it in IMAX 3D, and the walk is about the guy who walked, Philip Petit, who walked across the... Uh, a tightrope across He's not that the, big, I heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> across the World Trade Centers. Now, that guy is... One of the crazy, you know, it's inspirational. It's like, who the fuck would do it? You know, yeah, what a we talk about job. like no money in it and no, yeah, like there's, and it wasn't like somebody set that type rope up. That it was like a, like a heist movie. They had to break into the World Trade Center. They took three years to figure it out, to lay it out. And then when they shot the uh, arrow across to get, like shoot a, a little string across, mm. it just teetered. You know, on the edge, and they had to walk out to the it's edge. Like, of the yeah, building. you know what? That's good enough. Yeah, and, and that looks grab fine. It. That looks fine. <laughs> and grab a string and, and pull, you yeah. know, pull it back in. Duct and tape. then they had to they had to attach a rope, a, a thin rope to a string, and then a thicker rope, and keep going back and forth, back and forth. When you see them doing this shit just to get this cable up there, and then a the guy takes the first step on the cable, I'm like, I was so my, my feet are sweating right now talking about it. Dude, it's fucking crazy. It just scares the it's, shit out of me. The, the I just woke up from a nap. Those buildings aren't even standing anymore, and if, it scares the shit out of me. My butthole's wet, but it's if, been wet. The if whole anybody day. wants to see the real story, watch the documentary Man on Wire. Yeah, which in 2008 was at Sundance when we were there with Bigger, Stronger, Faster, and that Man movie, on the Wire isn't. Goldie Hawn in that? Man on Wire. No, it's Bird, on, bird on Wire. Oh, never mind. It's Man, not on, a Kanye Man on Wire <laughs> is an West amazing song? documentary, and it won, um, it won an Oscar for Best Picture exactly. that year. Best Shit. documentary. Going back to Star Trek for just a second. Trek or Wars? Trek. I'm out. Well, no, you're not. You're not out because I'm going to loop you back. Cling on. A second. Cling on. So, I don't know. No, so Trek. people. I don't know anything about Star Trek either. A either. lot of people who are really big, you know, hardcore Star Trek fans hated the rebooted movies because they were different. And the same thing's going to happen with Star Wars. Yeah. This movie's going to come out. And a lot of people mad. are going to hate it. For I okay, listen. If you guys think I'm going to hate it, like he wants to go hipster on me, I already have fucking tickets for it. That's what I'm talking about, boy. Yeah. 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 That's I, what I'm have, talking about. Hey. I already have fucking tickets. So if you want to say that I'm not gonna, I'm gonna hate. I'm going in wanting to like it. I'm going in dressed as Yoda. I have tickets Yoda's for not even in the movie. The day before it even opens. I do. I try to go, but then I was like, in L. A. They have movie theaters where you pick your seats. We don't have that shit. I pick my seat all the time. Yeah, we don't have that shit. We don't. So you're gonna spend up sitting in the back. So I didn't want to go. The, I'm IMAX. Like, you can pick if your you're seat. a real oh, really? fan, yeah. you'd travel to L. A. to see it. I'm gonna go Monday. 
and fucking take up a whole but row by want, myself. I'm gonna bring a fucking barbecue in there. Want to hear fucking something tailgate? Great. Something insane is uh, as soon as they announced it, like I'm such a film nerd that I have like Fandango or whatever. They they send me a text. Nerd. It crashed. Yeah, they send me a text and they're like Star Wars tickets are out. So I go on and I try like three or four different theaters and they're all sold out yeah. already. I'm going what? There were tickets <laughs> available up here, but then I thought I was like fuck, I won't be happy. I finally got them for a theater I never go to. The only the only move I saw at that theater at the Grove was uh, now you're gonna get shot the there. Dark Knight Rises, yeah, and that's what I was like. Yeah. Whoa, Dark Knight Rises. Do you like that movie? I love that movie. That was yeah, a good movie. Was all right, cool. Yeah. Except for when he's like bouncing a nuclear bomb down the street. Yeah, oh, that's a little weird. A little bit. Wild, but, uh, but hated that movie. The problem with the uh, superhero really? movies, I just I just love like the cinematography and the, like the whole Batman thing was cool. What about you know, Batman versus along. Superman? Why do they got beef? I don't know. That's gonna be. Can't they fucking I don't think that's gonna be good. Oh, that'll be cheap. I'm sure. Yeah. The, I, yes. I've heard a lot of different theories about what's going on there. Like maybe Ben Affleck the superhero is not movies, Bruce Wayne Batman. He's a different Batman. The superhero movies are never good when once the guy's already exposed. They're well, done, they're once, done. Because they, then they, they add they like a superhero, superhero movie. Cool, are, and you find out why you know. Yeah, what, the origin what, story is always yeah. cool. That's yeah. why I like the original Star Wars. That was a big origin story of like the whole like Luke Skywalker. I could watch a lot the whole of X-Men, Star Wars uh, series is an origin story. Like where did Darth Vader yeah. fucking come from? Who the yeah. fucks yeah. Leia? X Men's like that a little bit. I, I can watch that shit all day. I watched X Men yesterday. Every time. It's on. I watch it X-Men's every single time. Good. That's like Star Wars. I didn't like Wolverine. The newest, newest X Men. I didn't like that much. Oh, it was all right. It. it was all right. I liked it. I liked yeah, it, it enough. Fun. But my one of my favorite Deadpool? superhero movies. Period is uh, Unbreakable. Oh, oh, oh amazing! God, Unbreakable. Yeah, amazing. let's go back to that. That's Unbreakable. The bench press scene. <laughs> I haven't seen it. <laughs> Bruce Willis. Willis. Fucking amazing. Yes. And like that movie, so Bruce underrated. Willis discovers the slingshot and just yeah. benches it's some. It's so uh, underrated, and people were like, "Oh, yeah, that movie's great." Didn't wasn't he putting buckets on the end of the? Yeah, 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 yeah. He keeps telling his kid to step back. He's like, "Step back," and he keeps telling him to step back further and further. It was keeps so cool. More and like, more weight. Yeah, and it was, and nobody liked it. Oh, I remember. So good. I remember like a lot. Movie. I'm glad we all agree on it because like Holy a lot of people crap. didn't like Who it. Who directed I, that one? Boring idea. That was M. M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan. Oh, okay. Shyamalan and Ding Dong. Yeah, it hasn't done really <laughs> much good since, right? No, he, he did something recently. Yeah, oh, good. he did a TV show that people like, right? No, he just did, he just did a t- he just did a movie that did really well. He like just did some a movie, that yeah. Airbender or whatever. No, no, no. That's, that's a cartoon, and that's a great cartoon. The cartoon hey, of that's amazing. New, there's a new movie with uh, Vin Diesel called like The Last Witch Hunter. Yeah, it's probably so it bad. Sucked what, bad. What's wrong with Vinny, man? The... There's a new movie with Bill Murray called Rock the Casbah. It got eight percent on Rotten yeah, Tomatoes. I was all excited to see it, and I'm like, I can't even go see it with that. I just saw Ghostbusters for the first time ever. Oh, I love Ghostbusters. So good. <laughs> They're doing a reboot with uh, chicks, right? Yeah, with uh, what's her name is going to be in it. Um, Ronda Rousey, Melissa McCarthy, and oh. she's it should have been Ronda Rousey. That would be amazing. Yeah. The visit. The last Airbender. The, the Airbender after Earth was kind of shit. Oh, the visit. What was that all about? Wait, wait, wait. I it saw was, that. The, I think it, it was a uh, uh, boy and girl. They go to visit their grandparents, and their grandparents are weird. Oh no, no, I didn't see that. Okay, I saw the trailer. Did you like for that. it? Looked terrifying. I didn't see it, but it, <laughs> it's it, a scary it, movie? it did pretty well. What about um, terrifying. what about other? Mo- oh, I, I was thinking of the guest. The guest. I don't know. All those scary the, movies are Christmas no. The gift. The gift. The gift. That was with uh, Jason Bateman with the creepy guy. That was pretty cool. I'm so stupid. I can't even remember if I've seen a movie or not. <laughs> the Last Airman. Legitimately, I have no idea like what I've seen. Sometimes After Earth. Oh my Science. God. Science. Uh, I didn't know he was Science was fucking fast. That was, That's great. I like that. that was, uh, After Earth. Uh, Will Smith. Will right? Smith. Yeah. It hey, sucked. Listen, Will Smith's son is the worst. Oh, yeah, I love movie. Will Smith though. It sucks. Yeah. What about the concussion movie, Will Smith? Any good? You think? Or where he plays like that? No. I don't think I'll like it. No way. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the really NFL cheap. doesn't like it already. Well, what's the NFL movie? I think it's about the Browns too, where they got. It's kind of like a uh, draft day. Yeah, it, that's what the preview of the it's Will hard, Smith movie looks like. It's hard to make a movie about like draft sports. day looks bad. Like, All of it. Moneyball looks bad. was actually really cool. That's and pretty that was, good. That was a behind the scenes look at sports. Yeah. But for the most part, those movies aren't. And, that and good. Moneyball is like somewhat real. Yeah, right. About it, somewhat about a real game. Only, only somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. reason we the, love they, sports is because there's already drama. Don't yeah. make a fake sports movie. You don't besides yeah. Rocky. It's hard to see. Yeah, yeah, besides Rocky. But even Rocky's loosely based on... Uh, but Rocky is, uh, yeah. Rocky's a little bit different. Like, boxing is uh, a different animal because it's an individual sport. It's an individual guy. It's hard to, like, do a team sport movie. And fake. Really good. Just yeah. program was successful, drama. I think. The program? Wasn't the program pretty successful? Thought. Was that a fake I, I story? That's with Latimer, and we were talking about the other day. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Steroids co- the college movie that showed up. It was yeah, a little bit cheesy, it. but it was really cool, I thought. Yeah, but I'm sure, like, movie-wise, it probably did okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, oh, my God, they're rebo- rebooting it? The program? They should, totally should. 2015? So. Please Looks like me. it. Ooh, no. What about the reboot of Point Break? So if Point Break was one of the best never movies saw it. ever. 
like best mo- action movies of all. I don't know what you call it action movie. Yeah, yeah. Point Break is good. Of all time. And it's yeah. like now they're rebooting it. And it's like they're showing like money falling from the sky. And Why are we using the ro- word reboot? Is that is that the word we're going with? Remake, right? I don't know. Refeed? Reboot? Well, because they're oh, a yeah, refeed. refeed. Yeah, that's what we're on a refeed with these Sour Patch Kids. If, mm-hmm. they're, if, they're, if they're putting money into it, they're trying to get a franchise out of it. So it's a re- reboot boot instead of a... Control all delete. Yeah, exactly. You that's a movie. That. So what is the program? Can you click on that and see what's going on there? This new one? Can yeah. we go back to Star Wars? They're making a no, Star Wars. Look like a no, it doesn't look like a champion at all. hero legend cheat. Nope. What is that about? Uh, I don't Lance know. Armstrong? Stephen Frears. Oh, yeah. Why is Lance Armstrong Lance Armstrong. Little trailer? It's yeah, about, it's about it's long, a... Lance Armstrong. Yeah. Wow. The Armstrong live was dope. That was a great movie. You like that, that, yeah, boy? You know, uh, Lance Armstrong, he tweeted me after um, when Novitsky was on Joe Rogan. And he's like, you're listening to this bullshit? <laughs> and I was like, well, what's he saying? And he's like, oh, it's all bullshit. Half the things he's saying is bullshit. So I, I, I don't know if he has been on Rogan yet, but I, I hooked up Rogan with uh, Lance. Yeah, That's to, amazing. I said, well, you got to get on there and tell your side of the story. You know, yeah. If you want to do that, you know. That's interesting. That's so weird that he. Why didn't you bring up. Lance onto the podcast on really? the Powercast? We can if you want. The hell yeah! Are you kidding me? No, that sounds terrible. We want Lance Armstrong on we here. Can talk about the juice. Yeah. What Jamba Juice? We should talk about the juice right now. Why not? Hell yeah! Everybody thinks what? Silent Mike's on that shit. No, he's natural. He's yeah, yeah, he's not on shit. What these sixteens are natural? Mm-hmm. Everybody loves to talk about like who's on steroids. Who's There's on. a whole website called Natty or Not. Who's Natty on first? And and so it tells you like, what's on second. Tells you if somebody's natural or not. Well, so they go through this anal- uh, uh, mm-hmm. analytics. Like Omar's on there, and he's three and a half or out of five. But people think Omar's on steroids. It's like kind of a joke, kind of not. Look, let's see if Mark's on there. They just take like uh, fitness people. Maybe and are they talking about lifetime natural? Yeah, see, drug free, lifetime natural. I don't know what. Yeah, here we go. Natty or not. There was a whole lot of. Uh, God damn, these fucking Sour Patch kids are dope. They're addicting as well. Uh, I feel like the, my you stomach. know what's great? It's right before we went on the air here. He goes, uh, I don't really like candy like this. And I was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like addicted to them. They are. Candy's addicted. They changed, they changed me. Okay, they turned so me out. This is articles. Where's. Yeah, I where's think articles. The, and, then, and then it just lists people. Is here. John Romano on here? Writing, you what? mean? No, I mean, is he on there? Go to, yeah, is go Mike, to articles. Michael you just got to scroll around. around. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Have you seen uh, any of Romano's articles, Bore, about uh, him talking about how uh, the CrossFit community is very naive and they should understand that a lot of the athletes are using steroids? No, just, I haven't seen that. We just had a chat with our CrossFit homies about it. What do they think? Uh, they, that's why they brought Who Mark Who cares on. what they think? What do you think, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I think You're the lot, fucking I, expert. I just think a lot of people are on steroids. That people, You know, like when I first came to Gold's Gym. I love them if they're, if they're on my team. Yeah, that's I my used, favorite line. I, used to be like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, that guy, you know, he could be natural or whatever. Now that I know so many people that use steroids, I just... I just think everybody's on them. You know, like not everybody, but a lot of people are on them. You think everybody's on them but me. And a lot of people say that they're natural, and there's a reason that they, that they don't. There's nothing really uh, to gain. Is there any some real, like, telltale signs that someone's on them? Like, I, I used to always say, like, Acting. if someone's over, like, 220 if and, somebody's, they're, yeah. and they're under 10% body fat, that's a good indicator. But that's a huge you don't rule out lightweights, there, right? There's also Anderson Silva, who's been tested for – or who's – Tested positive for performance enhancing drugs. There's a lot of other people that don't look that great that have tested positive for them. War on Sour Patch Kids. Uh, I'm going to try one. I'm going to try. Yeah, try. Yeah, yeah you, like, you never had one before. <laughs> what are these things? Snickers? Yeah. Never heard ve- of it. Vegan Gains? Yeah. That's yeah. worse. There's also um, different performance enhancing drugs that may or may not be steroids that yeah. don't add mass, correct? What? Right. Like what? Oh, like, like EPO yeah. or something? Or even like uh, something Growth like. Hormone. Yeah, or something like Anivar, right? Sour Patch Kids. If, if I take a bunch of Anivar and I don't eat more food, I'm not going to get up to 250. Anivar will get you stronger, you know? You know what I mean, though, right? If I don't eat more almost, food. You know what's crazy is almost all the fitness girls are on Anivar. And, and they're not the, 200 you know, pounds. B- bikini girls right. and all this stuff. And like, they're 120 people pounds. People ask me, like, what does your girlfriend take? I'm like, she doesn't even take aspirin. So it's like, it's funny because it's hard to tell with the girls because you don't know what they look like coming into it. Yeah. So you have to, like, have a baseline. If you saw a girl yeah, the with, transformation with, with photo. zero muscle on, and then so, say, yeah. so maybe, like, a decent indicator period across the board would be if you knew somebody for a while and, and they're similar. For a very long period of time, they've gained 15 pounds of strength. They've gained 10 pounds over the course of six years. Like all that's like within reason of them still being natty, right? 
Oh yeah, if they get, but if they gain like thirty pounds or they get shredded, right? Thirty good sudden, pounds. You're kind of yeah. like, I don't know, man. Like I don't know about well, that guy. Yeah, they know? go up and, and then, down. Like, and then also, like, what is your what is your definition of natural? Like, I feel if you're taking a testosterone booster or some sort of right. pro hormone, you're doing the same thing as steroids do. So you're basically on steroids. Like that's that's I the think same. Yeah. It's the same exact thing. I don't and, know. And so what happens is these drugs that are these pro hormones that are legal. When they figure out that they actually work pretty good, they make them illegal, and so then basically you were on the juice. So it's like, right? Yeah, you know, your your intent is to get bigger using testosterone than you're on steroids. Yeah, I don't know if uh, about um, USAPL or some of the drug free powerlifting, but I do know some of the drug free or drug tested uh, bodybuilding. Uh, says that who knows how they test for it or whatever but at least they say like no pro hormones no nothing you know whether they can regulate well, even that. uh like bryce he wants to do the uh he wants to do the paralympics or right. whatever right and uh he was saying um that he can't be on anything yeah like not a stimulant or nothing well college like uh creatine well, well col- I college yeah. i think also people need to realize it's not the be all end all right you know? like after i did bigger stronger faster i was like oh, okay cool now now that i said this is okay yeah. now i can try it well that's what and, and i've tried it with like kind of minimal success you know like i i was stronger before i ever did it because i'm i have a lot of injuries now so i i don't think that that would be the case if i didn't have a lot of injuries but like and i never got as much out of it as i thought i was going to get out of it and i never i realized like i but, thought like oh cool all my lifts were going to go through the roof and it's just right. not really the case it's like you still got to work really hard well some of that may be genetic too they talk yeah. about the top uh power lifters the bodybuilders being able to uh physically and mentally handle more drugs or more whatever so that they can excel yeah. faster or ronnie more. coleman's a monster either way right? right i mean you know what i mean like you that see, guy rumor has it kai green turned ifbb pro before he took anything there's pictures of him and he looks ridiculous and yeah, he's just he's just 40 pounds smaller scale yeah, yeah. Like, I, I would maybe question you know whether he's able to get Right. Become an actual pro Who that knows? way, but he, I'm sure he's able to get very close to For it. Anyway. Phil Heath, right? He's on stage about yeah. 230, 240 now. If you look at his uh, college basketball pictures, he's 180. And it I looks the exact th- same. Th- there's he's a big shredded, people yeah. we need to understand. Also, there's a big difference between using the amount of steroids that I use, which is maybe like. 40 milligrams of Anavar with Wait a little. Second. With, uh, what are you giving? Are you yeah. giving me a protocol like, right now? Uh, listen, shit. <laughs> with like 400 milligrams of testosterone, and then you know, like like doing something like that, and maybe a little throwing a little Prima Bowl or something like that. That's a big difference in doing. <laughs> Why'd like you smile when you said insulin, that? Insulin, <laughs> growth hormone, and then like seven other drugs. And whatever your it. mom's and, on. What's your mom on? Uh, Metformin. 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 Yeah. None of that bullshit. Well, uh, what I'm saying is like, there's a huge difference between taking a giant stack of drugs, you know, stack, and then taking like. You know, so you're suggesting to, that we have another powerlifting federation extra that's drugs. just for the guys that that are only taking like a mi- yeah, like forty a mix bit. or oh, here's more. The other, here's the other thing is that everybody claims they yeah, only yeah. take a little bit. Is yeah. that great? No, I but only, that I took guy some for a few for yeah. a minute. No, yeah. you, you hear, <laughs> you hear what take, that guy takes. I only take a little bit. You know what he takes? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's like Joey Swole over there takes. Uh, oh yeah, people always accuse. What? Joey Swole's natty. I wasn't talking about the real Joey Swole. I was just making up a name. People always talk about yeah, like the strongest lifters in the world. Like oh he runs yeah. a lot of shit. <laughs> okay, let's talk about uh, <laughs> let's talk about like guys that are the strongest guys in the world, like uh, Ed Cohn. Right. Like you know when you talk about talk to him about it, there's there's not a whole lot. It's not like oh and I was taking insulin and growth. And Even doing, if it was, it does not explain the strength level. No. Like, I, was, able to I was taking some tests and I got in trouble for it. You know. Yeah. Well, right. testing some Decker or something like that. Not a big deal. Not a whole lot because he was already strong. When he was 16 years old, he squatted 500 pounds, right. so explain yeah, that. Yeah, weighing 150 pounds. We had Jesse Norris here a few weeks ago, and um, he said something different in the interview that he did with Mark and, and Mike than he did on the podcast, and there was a lot of conversation on YouTube about it, and back and forth and whatever, because he said, um, I could probably even read it to you, but basically what he said was that people people are, are, um, people are, are small-minded, they can't believe that someone like me couldn't do what I can do without taking performance-enhancing drugs. But in the middle of that sentence, he digressed into, I'm not going to say I'm natural. Or I don't want to say I'm natural. Right. That's what he said. That can be yeah. taken a million ways. And it can be taken a million right. ways. And the way I said, just take the digressions out of the sentence. And that's what he was trying to say. Yeah. Because a million times in live interviews, yeah. people always right. digress what into is something sh- that they didn't mean yeah, to he say. He could have yeah. easily been saying, like, I don't want to sit here and just say, I'm natural, I'm natural, right. I'm natural, right. and exactly. argue all that's day how long. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, how I that's, took it. That's how I took it. I think that's exactly what he meant. There's because a, people are small-minded. They hear a 100-pound deadlift, and they're automatically saying, you're on them. I don't care what you say or how you say it. Or right. what federation you get tested? But it's in. so weird. They, 
people don't argue about Mike Tashir. I've never really, really once heard one person say, like, oh, Mike Tashir is on shit. Yeah. No one says that. We, we and it's unexplainable. The when guy we were, when we were, looks like 850 pounds. And you know? isn't he only like a 275 or It's not like he's fucking 400 yeah. pounds. When we right. were kids, there was a power it's lifter. Unbelievable. There was unbelievable. A, there was a, there's a guy that ran the federation we lifted in. His name's Pete Jasandi. He's still a friend of mine on Facebook, and he's a great guy. Why'd Pete you have Gisandi. to throw on Facebook? He's Pete. not a friend in real life. <laughs> no, he's a friend in real life, but he's but uh, you know he lives in New York, whatever. So Pete Jasandi was he's huge. in bigger, stronger, faster. He's right? in bigger, stronger, faster. He asked us, you know, people think you guys are on drugs, like that scene in the beginning where we're out of power. Yeah, we're right, little right. kids. Smelly's like 15, and he's already like a foot taller than me. It's like ridiculous. But anyway, so that guy told me, he H-G-H. said, he said, no, he said, uh, I, I asked him, I said. Uh, do you remember Steve Scalpy? He goes, of course I remember St- Steve Scalpy. He was our guy. He trained with us. He said, 181, 198, eight, right? 800 pound deadlift at 198. Jacked. He was jacked, and he goes, and he was drug free. He goes, because all the rest of us, you know, we, we were doing whatever, and he was drug free. And I'm like, he was drug free. And he goes, oh yeah, Steve wouldn't take anything. And I, and he had an 800 pound deadlift. And I, you know, I, Pete Jasandi's kind of like. A really, you know, uh, religious guy. I don't think he would like tell me a lie if he, he right. as far as he knew, the guy was natural. Yeah. Right. And when he saw the guy, like he was pretty jacked, but like who knows? I mean, this guy deadlifts what six thirty five, mm-hmm. uh, drug free. Now you're talking about like a guy that's a little bit more squatty and a little bit more jacked doing, you know, se- I think he did a seven ninety three or something like yeah, that. So yeah. who know? Who knows? You know? Yeah. I don't think you can know. That's the thing. People just want to to jump yeah. to the conclusion because. In part because the the I fell asleep there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> because the comparison Stand is not snoring. good. The comparison to themselves is not good. They don't look yeah. good. They can't. Well, they're not that strong. In powerlifting, really, uh, I, I realized that you know if you just deny something forever, that no one will ever really know the truth. You know, right. I, I do understand that por- part of it. You just deny the fuck out of it. Deny, and no deny, one will, deny. Yeah, no one will ever know, right? Right. But what's the real gain in powerlifting? Like, what is what is Jesse Norris gain? Is he is he uh, you know, swimming in a big thing of money because he deadlifts 800 pounds no, no. in a drug-tested federation. It, Lance Armstrong had a lot more on the line. A lot of these base professional baseball players and football players and stuff. There's a lot more on the line, so of course they're going to lie about no. it. They're kind of forced to. I, I think you make yourself look stupid going around saying that you're natural. You make yourself I, I look like it, you just make yourself I only look said good. it once, and I, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah I only said it. it just looks stupid if you're if you're really not. Yeah, you know? yeah. right. And it, and if you are, usually the people don't talk about it that much. They right. don't really say, oh, but I'm natural. But I'm natural. Like. You don't really ever say it. I never hear Only Simon Mike. Ass. I don't really ever hear Simon Mike walking around. I'm all natural, and I'm I, I'm training. I train natural. Like he just says, I deadlift seven, yeah. you know, six thirty-five, and I'm. To, to me, those same those people are the same people who are always talking about how great their relationship is on on social media. Yeah, yeah, true. You know, it's like yeah. they're trying. My to, relationship sucks. Trying to <laughs> trying to force it into Sandy, reality. Sandy, <laughs> you're out there. Listen, you probably media. listen to us. First day. Yeah, sure. You know, you know people, she sits uh, at her desk and pretends to work. That's great. People always talk about, like, you know, what's cheating? You know, they'll say, oh, that's cheating. Right. This is cheating or that's cheating. Well, in powerlifting, you know, you can decide to go to a non-tested federation if you want, or you can go into a tested federation. So if you're natural and you that's where you, where you want to stay, you want to stay in that lane, then you can go that way. But cheating, I guess, in this case would be uh, you taking stuff and you know, being on steroids yeah, yeah. and then going into the USAPL right. and competing and beating other athletes that are being tested that are actually clean, right? But, but, I, ironically, I mean, is that how we kind of define it? Ironically, right? when we were young, me and Mark always got tested because we were teenagers. So they te- they only had to test 10% of the lifters. Right. This is back in the old Even still, ADF- I think it's something like that. ADFPA. So they only have to test I think 10 CrossFit does like 2%. 10% of the yeah. lifters. And it was only Cheaters. by polygraph. So it's just a lie detector test. And they would test the teenagers and the women. I just because learned. All the, so all the guys could get away with it. Right. I just learned that in a lie detector, you sit on like a butthole sensor. A what? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What lie detector did you go to? I haven't never taken one, but you it's sit on a thing. Are you telling the truth right now? I can't tell. <laughs> no, I swear. Like Bend a, over. How fancy one you down. sit on a thing because your butthole. And you bloop it? No, nah, kind of. <laughs> it's like a sensor. You've been talking about your asshole a lot there, lately. This must be something somebody lied to you about because it's like that. I swear. It's, it I goes on it. your finger. Yeah, yeah. There's some on your finger, but then a fancy one, they're getting your heart rate. It and goes all this on shit. your finger, and then you shove your <laughs> finger up your ass. And then you're like, I like. I where swear this is you're going. sitting on something, and it reads if your butthole oh, is shivering. Your butthole's never God. shivered. I got it. Type I in butthole it. shiver <laughs> on Google. Tell me what that pops up. I'm sorry, I won't be doing Yeah, like your butthole. Yeah, quiver, shiver, same thing. You've never had a what quiver of you fart? You're, you're lying. lying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're lying out Have your ass. Have you ever ass. done cocaine? Lying out <laughs> your ass. Is yeah. that what it is? Lying, lying out, out your ass? ass. Yeah. See? Yeah. God damn. See? Uh, that's not, yeah, lie detector. Guy's all hooked up. <laughs> you can't see his He's, butthole sensor, but it's did there. You, did you put a butthole? <laughs> I swear I, I uh, saw the awkward, of that. The awkward truth about lie detectors. Tom, I also I heard know. they're not that accurate. 
Well, if they're up, they're up your ass. Oh, they there it is. Be Line 20, big butthole sensor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there it is, right next to the fucking Nutella. <laughs> you're, you're Boy, where was uh, Nutella made? Oh, here we go. What? Where was Nutella made? Where was it made? I think that guy just died. Sweden? He, he did die. <laughs> yeah. No, <Where>? close. <laughs> he died in Switzerland. Oh Nazi uh, Italy. Nazi <laughs> Italy was made. Nazi Italy? Well, like yeah, right after World War II. Is there, a Nazi, it, it is there was, a Nazi Italy? There was a Nazi Italy, right? I don't know. I thought that was a town you were talking about. I was like, no. I can't believe there's like a Mussolini town. Like Mussolini and shit. <laughs> I can't I'm way a smarter than Nazi. you guys give me credit for. After World War II. There was, a, okay. there was no chocolate around. There was a shortage of chocolate. So and then, so you've heard of Ferrero Rocher. Whoa, the, the, fancy. The, it's like a truffle kind of mm. thing. Those like are actually kind of gross. I don't like yeah, them. Yeah, okay. Well, it's the same guy. Yeah, so what he did, he was a hazelnut farmer or something, and he mixed half hazelnut, half chocolate. Yes. But that he was, was basically like a 19, Nazi is what I said. <laughs> and I might have been wrong. 1947. I've never even had Nutella, to tell you the truth. It's really? not. It's overrated. Just get chocolate I sauce. Really had He's it. crazy. It's delicious. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. It's fine. I mean, I'm fat without it. I mean, who needs, who needs it? Yeah. I think you're not fat, though. You're Here, let me stick this up your butt and see if you're telling the truth. You'll yeah. get the calories. What the hell? I think you're getting it confused with the, the arousal thing they put on your dick. Like, to see if you're... I've never you know, had anything on my dick. To see if you're a child molester or they whatever. They bring you in and put what? a cock ring on. Maybe. Speaking of child molesters. Wait a second. What the hell is this about? Have <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen a <laughs> arousal thing? Have you not? Nope. Not, not arousal. <laughs> nope. That picture doesn't do it for me. Yeah. What the hell? Is that like gay hunting? They take you to dicks? No, it's like you to the playground, you little faggot. <laughs> opening, a, opening a Ghostbusters. What the right? hell? Cards. <laughs> what the hell is going on around here? What were you going to say? This podcast is about going I was going to say, uh, we were talking about. This is the worst one we've ever done. I was talking about To Catch a Predator. Yeah. And I was watching it one time. Chris Hansen? Yeah, I was watching it one time, and this guy is sort of like he's sort of like. And a, you heard? He, no, he's sort of like <laughs> a, he's sort of like a like a midget, but he wasn't a midget. He was like maybe like little person, four all right, four foot ten or something. And he comes in, he's all like you know, he's kind of all tough looking, wearing like a Carhartt jacket and like beard and everything. And Chris Hansen's like, I can't believe we we caught you twice. <laughs> he, the guy was on the show. Two times. <laughs> so he went to jail. He got out of jail, and then they bu- he, he fell for it again. Oh Another 15 God. minutes right there. I was like, man, poor poor little Majito. I don't know what his problem was. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. But, like, imagine being on the same What's thing What's that twice. show? They touch little kids on that show? Uh, they, they go thinking that they're going to go meet a 12-year-old girl yeah, or whatever yeah, and, they don't. and show it's up. A, and it's, that's like, so creepy. Bait, God, whatever. Damn, yeah. that's a crazy-ass concept for a fucking show, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me... let me. I got a, I got a show to pitch you. Like, let's yeah. go in. We're going to dress like perverts. <laughs> 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 yeah, how crazy. Yeah, who tried we're, out we're, for we're that? Gonna, we're going to set this up where... Uh, we're going to bring in, you know... Well, what about the guys that, like, are setting up these, like, fake accounts to make them appealing? Yeah, oh yeah, they're like, disgusting. They're, they're twisted too. That's why I talk about like horror the movies worst show or like ever. scary movies. <laughs> the, the, the the worst show ever is Catfish because it's all predicated on people. Being he was at your premiere. It's it's all predicated. I was. I saw him. He, he was, was getting popcorn. Oh, I love the show. First no, no, of all. he's fine. Yeah, yeah. I love the show, but it's funny because it's all predicated on like it's all I don't fat know what people. This is. It's all fat catfish. people. Catfish. Like when, you, when you find out who the yeah, girl yeah, they're is always gross. Or who the guy is, it's always fat. So Catfish so Smelly is a show where uh, two guys, uh, Neve. Neve and, and his Tyler? No, maybe his cousin. Maybe his cousin. Yeah, buddy. Cousin. Yeah, cousin. What's his name? Date. Date? I don't know. Don't so know they uh, go on the internet and people write him emails. Like Chris writes him an email. Like Ken hey. Kniff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like that. So it's internet dating like gone wrong. <laughs> and so like they've never met each other. Like hey, I've been dating this chick through the internet three What's years. His, the uh, the and then football they invest- player. The football player from Notre Dame. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Monte Teo. Yeah, whatever. Monte Teo. Yeah. It's like stories like that. Like he has a girlfriend, but it's fake, and then, right, right, and then yeah. they go and they so find, they investigate it. Yeah, they there investigate, he is. They find Neve the or whatever was it's buying popcorn uh, at your premiere. I saw him. Did he come into the premiere? Or I was think he so. A different movie. Oh, uh, maybe. Was there different know. movies at that exact same time? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he was at your movie. We'll have to hit him up. This dude. But yeah, it's amazing because they, that show is like they always go and hunt down the you know person. Like I've been talking to this person for yeah, three years. They, they're texting hella hot pictures. There's only so one gross. time where I saw where it was a hot chick and when it was a hot chick and then like it didn't actually work out. Yeah, of course. And the chick was a wrestler. She like WWE. No, she was like an amateur wrestler and she was like hot and she was like an ass kicker. But then when she met the guy in real life, they didn't really click. So no. it bombed out. Mm. No. The internet's anyway. ruined it. It's a great show. You got to watch it because it always ends up being somebody so fat. <laughs> I, I've I've, I've awesome. definitely watched it before. I just yes. don't know how, in this day and age, 
people get to that point of like hey you can do your own investigation yeah too. exactly you can find out about people if you really want to know i mean well you, you don't want to know that's the thing yeah that's, click, the thing. Click, that's my point exactly click on their profile picture drag it into google images and i'll show where that image comes up right and then right. you realize oh that's not the person that yeah. Yeah. you're like oh it's a hot girl but it's a fat guy instead you're like i don't care yeah i'll <laughs> well, fuck anything Fine at this point yeah. <laughs> exactly. if you, hey if you're lonely you're lonely right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I've never been with a fat guy before. Maybe I'll just give it a fucking whirl. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Give it a give it a try. You're lonely. They're not charging anything. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of amazing. Leads to yeah. another. You can leave whenever you want. You know, what website is this? <laughs> or show? How do I get on the show? I'll, you got to audition. I'll have catfish on, and Lauren will be like, "Oh, like turn that off, turn that garbage off." Next thing you know, she's like totally sucked into it. Like <laughs> that's well, great. Got to find out who who did it. Kind of like me and these fucking sour patch kids. Oh my god, in. it's like Dateline NBC too. She always tells me like, "You're like an old man." Oh, you just watch Dateline. 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 Like, I want. <laughs> and, so scares me. And what's yeah. crazy about Dateline is when somebody doesn't get killed, I don't want to watch it when it's like about like special investigative report about this i'm like i don't i want to find like you know see somebody's got to get fucking murdered somebody get murdered i gotta find out who did it you know all that stuff freaks me out and i hate when they lead you on who did it what do you think about murdering that pussy what do i think about it yeah that's kind of gross i know but it supposedly has happened before i think it's a rapper rapper yeah yeah, it's a rap thing Hmm. to get in trouble for that i've never seen that on dateline though what are you in jail for (laughs) killing that pussy (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) That'd be cool if it was on date. Cuddlefish? Is that what it was? What kind of fish was it? Cuddlefish. is similar right? to a, a pussy. Yeah. Have you seen a cuddlefish? What? Have you ever seen a cuddlefish? No. We'll buy you one for your birthday. Yeah, get me one. Yeah. Why not? Cuddlefish Lauren, can't be Lauren that Lauren can't say shit about that. Lauren will be like, why you got your dick in the fish tank? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Yeah, cuddlefish, man. <laughs> I don't think she cares about stuff like that, you know? About dicks and... Cuddlefish and stuff, yeah. She's not into it. I don't think she'd care. Oh. Hey, no. I think it is a cuddlefish, right? What? Yeah. Those things act like uh, dogs, too. Wait, whose pussy does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen one that looks like that. That looks do like Jar Jar, wrong, Jar Jar Binks. Do we have the of. wrong fish? I thought it was I n- thought it was a cuddlefish. Maybe it's yeah. not a cuddlefish. It's I don't uh, think it's a cuddlefish. Something else fish. God I don't want to cuddle with that fish. Pucker fish? No. Uh, what the Pucker hell? Pucker fish. That's disgusting. No, look at the puffer. front of that one. Oh, maybe a puffer? No. Those are weird. This is mm. disgusting. We're that fish that we want to fuck. Yeah, we're trying this to like whack <laughs> off to fish. This is like Zoidberg from a, fil- uh, a filth Futurama right here. Filth. You uh, wait. What do you say? Fish, what, like who do you, who do you say Lauren looks like? Quagmire. <laughs> Quagmire. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> when she smiles, she's got like this big like yeah, giant yeah. cheeks and like Quagmire is an amazing character. He's, like, he's just a total eyes. pervert. And it's great because I call her that. And she just like dies laughing. <laughs> she can't help so, like laughing from it. It's not like she gets mad. Like don't call me that. Don't call she's me the weird. No, she's got no comeback. She just she's like, I'm a little quaggy. Yeah, you know. God damn. A little quaggy. Quagmire. Quagmire is great. That's a great show. Uh, Stewroids, the best episode ever. Uh, Stewroids, Jack. Yeah. So good. <laughs> oh Stewie. Uh, I don't so think you got your uh, you got your movie coming out in uh, January's, and um, I was going to ask you. I noticed that uh, there's a lot of different ways that movies are coming out now, and. Um, I can't even remember what movie it was now, but I heard the other day that people are releasing movies and uh, they're they're releasing them in a lot of different ways than they used to. Rather than just have them come out in the movie theater, sure. they're being released in the movie theater on Netflix, on YouTube. They're being released Straight everywhere. To Redbox. Kind of yeah, kind of all at once. What do you think about some of the different changes and stuff that are going on now? I think people are trying to okay. So you want to if you're if you're going to spend a million dollars on advertising, just say a million dollars. They're probably not going to spend that much on mine, but say they spend a couple hundred thousand dollars on advertising. Right. You want to spend that money and get the most out of it. So the best way to get the most out of it is like get it to the most people that you can yeah. the very first day. Now some people I know like Jim and I talk about this. Like I I like seeing movies in the theater. I think you do too, right? Yeah. Like you like rather, the movie theater will probably never change. It'll probably never change. I'd, I'd rather not in our lifetime. Yeah, I'd, I'd always like to see something in a in a movie theater. So I would go to the theater and see it. Whereas like you might say, you know what? I got kids. I'm gonna sit at home. I'm gonna order it and watch it with my yeah. wife. And, and Netflix is so popular. Well, now. also too, but, what but if Netflix you is a and di- chill? Here's the problem with Netflix. Netflix is gonna have to change their business model because I think something else will come along that's more filmmaker friendly. So Netflix, you'll sell your movie to Netflix for like like bigger, stronger, faster. I'll give you an example. Millions of people have watched that on Netflix, and I don't get any money out of it. Yeah. So yeah. eventually, the studios and the filmmakers are gonna say, hey. This is bullshit. We sell it to you for $100,000, and then we never see a penny out of it. So what they're going to start doing is, like, have to do is, like, an upfront fee, and yeah. then and then 
Royalty, the filmmakers and then kind of YouTube on. or something, uh, yeah. depending on how many views. It gets. People it's talk like YouTube. I hear things. And YouTube on. Red just came out. Isn't it YouTube Red a YouTube pay? Red. It's pay. Yeah, Red pay. YouTube, YouTube kills everybody. Red Tube or nine ninety nine a month. Red Tube. So uh, what can you watch on YouTube? Yeah, Red? YouTube Anything? Red is Red Tube, right? Yeah, well, I think so. <laughs> YouTube hey, Red right now is regular YouTube videos without uh, any ads. Like and, we can and, make... as, and as a creator, we everybody had to opt into the system where if. Some if people subscribe to uh, YouTube Red and they watch your videos, then you get your money that way instead of through advertising. Then they're going to start producing original content. That's with, what I would be interested with, in with YouTube stars, people who are already established YouTube stars, and that like PewDiePie is getting a, a series that's totally sure. different than what. Uh, that guy's so weird. Does. I don't know why he's so popular. I, I watched one anything. one video. Me too. I don't. So I don't weird. get it. I don't get it. He but was kind of creepy. He's fired up. He's yeah. the biggest YouTuber of all yeah, time. Yeah, he's a game, the gaming guy. Yeah, but he's yeah. just so weird. What about the person who opens up packages? Have you seen that? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. the Female, weirdest right? yeah. thing ever. Like, they just open yeah. up, like, unboxing little toys. Unboxing videos. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> unboxing. The, one of the biggest YouTubers, like, somebody that unboxes, like, toys for little kids. Yeah, yeah, and makes, yeah. like, $2 million a yeah. year yeah. off of it. It's so yeah. ridiculous. It's like, what is it. that? Why do you want to see that? I don't get it. But part of YouTube Red is now YouTube Music. Where you'll it's basically like a music subscription service, and then there's another piece of oh, the gaming, the gaming channel too. You yeah. get all that. I think that like the dis- the distribution models have changed, and it's and it's great. And um, a lot of times, uh, as a filmmaker, people miss the boat. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as like uh, how to distribute the movie, because they think like, oh, well, I- I'm gonna, I'm not gonna. There's only it one on, way to do it. I'm not gonna put it on Showtime because that's not enough money. But like, they gotta, you gotta realize there are so many avenues that you can make money on a film. So you release yeah. it to. What about to, just getting another job too? You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, exactly. just just the ability to, to get another job from pe- a lot of people seeing your film. Exactly. Yeah. So you, what you do want to do is like you want to put your movie out uh, as many ways as possible to every single audience as, as as possible. Like our film will come out, and there's only a small window to monetize it. Like between, um, if you want to see it between January and April. Then you got to pay for it. If you right. want to see it after April, it'll probably be on Netflix by then. Yeah. So I mean, we have a pretty small window because our film was actually funded with a Netflix deal in place. I think also uh, too, like right. if I was to catch a, a film that was good, uh, you know, through like Netflix and just watch it on my laptop, and I thought it was cool and I wanted to, like maybe it's a film I thought would be good for the kids or good for me and Andy to see, then I'd go to the movie theater as well. You know, so it's it it seems like a win win. It seems like people will purchase it in multiple spots. It's kind of weird. Netflix doesn't pay anything like that. I heard, uh, you know, Jim Rome, the sports caster Netflix guy. Netflix will pay a little bit up front, but then yeah, no, but like, I mean by view, he, he was in a very small role in Space Jam, and he talks about Space Jam getting played Space on Jam. like Disney Channel, and then a month later he gets like fifty bucks in the mail. You know that's that movie? Uh, yeah, that's but that's fucking awesome. Like why Screen wouldn't... Actors Guild and all that. Yeah, but it just yeah. seems like every movie ever should be that way. And yeah. there's ridiculous laws. Like if you were, like before. 1980. If you're in a movie before 1984 and they pay, they play it on cable, then you don't get any money for it Just because the way TV. that SAG was set up. So my the, my producer of Prescription Thugs is Peter Billingsley, who's the little kid who plays Ralphie in Christmas Story. Christmas story. Mm-hmm. And every time they play it, like that marathon, he doesn't get he any was, money He's for the it. main kid in Christmas Story? So when you story? ask him about it, he's just like, <laughs> he's know, the he, little, he doesn't get that mad about it. But like, yeah, he plays the little, little kid with glasses. Little that was like my dad's favorite movie. Yeah, I've never even seen it. He's amazing. Well, you got to watch that. I know. I think it takes uh, he was at place the in Cleveland. Pete, Peter was at the premiere. Really? He's Vince Vaughn's partner. Oh, Not yeah. partner, but like <laughs> his, his partner in business. Can we get Vince Vaughn on here? Can we get Vince Vaughn on here? Perhaps. He was a football player like Idaho or Iowa or some hmm. shit. I think he Vince played Vaughn, DM. I met him. I only met him once, and he walked in the office, and he was like, Bigger, stronger, faster. I love that movie. <laughs> then he starts getting all the politics about the juice, and he, That's he started great. talking about it. He's like, all right, see you later. And he, uh, <laughs> you know, so he came in. Kind of like a it's five, like he was never there. Four or five minute promo, and then he's out. <laughs> that's great, though. You should have recorded the whole thing. Yeah, I love. I you know that's the big, the best thing for me is like I was just in Best Buy yesterday, and I'm walking out the door, and a guy's like, "I loved your movie," and I'm like, "That's like to me, that's that's why you do it. Like I don't do it. I don't make a lot of money off of it. Um, I do it because I I love doing it. It's fun. It's fun to like expose things and talk about things, and eventually it'll turn into something bigger. You know, stronger, faster. faster. Mm. Hey now. Yeah. All right, man. You got anything else to say? <laughs> got nothing, man. Got nothing. Got nothing. I'm yeah, ready for nothing. lunch. Yeah. You got nothing. I got nothing. I got zero. Yeah, zero. Yeah. You got nothing to say. I got a lot to say, actually. Is you this a it. show about nothing? Yeah. You know, a lot of times. Uh, oh man. Here we go. Well, yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> I started I, when I was four. I do got something to say because a lot of people always ask me, 
they always like want to make a documentary and they always have these ideas uh, to make a documentary. But I always just tell them like I didn't, you know, when I started, I, I started with nothing. I didn't start with uh, a lot of money or I didn't start with, you know, a budget in place. And they just started with like writing an outline for it. And most people can't even get there. They just hit me up and want me to do it. So I tell them like, yeah, yeah, write an outline. Then I never hear from them again. Mm. So there's a lot of steps in, in doing it and making a movie. And if you want to get there and you also got to understand like most people are like oh you must have made that movie and made millions of dollars and that's not the way it goes so if you want to make a documentary you have to be in it because you love what you're doing when you uh, ask people for money um to make some of these films um how many people to get turned down by by you know before you strike it and and get a couple people to say yes um mo- most of them but actually the uh the the percentage Most of people won't respond back or yeah the percentage is pretty good because you go you go towards people that you know yeah, would yeah. be interested right. in it so like you're you're actually uh going after a captive audience whereas like you know like somebody will mention something when i did trophy kids my friend jake was like yeah you know i'd be interested in talking to you about trophy kids and like right away i know like okay he wants mm-hmm. to invest in it so then i go after him right. uh to it to invest in it and now we're you know this film that we're doing we're working with uh, MHP, and we're trying to get some other sponsors on board. And then um, we're also working with the company that did uh, Generation Iron and trying to get them on board because I think that that would be a great uh, a great team. You know, and it did. takes it takes a long time, right? Like it's not like you ask for money and then like a week later there's a big old check. No, it takes you know usually uh, anywhere. It usually takes about a year. Yeah. To get money from people, you know, even if it's small, because people don't want to you know just write a check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to to get people to actually commit to it. But that's pretty cool. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that want to make make a movie or do something big, and they don't know where to fucking start, you know? Wait, by the way, can I get some money for this uh, movie? <laughs> <laughs> you already hit me up, and yeah, the answer yeah. was already yes. I was yeah. the first one, so Absolutely, there you go. Absolutely, yeah. I want, actually Slingshot! Want to, yeah, we're going to put Slingshot on the movie. I think that that's really cool. Uh, I want to, um, you know, we, it's like uh, we want to help each other. Yeah. You know, so we want to come up with each Why not? A movie about strong guys? I mean, yeah. Hell yeah. So Just need a couple shirtless scenes. There you go. Oh yeah. I want to do a powerlifting movie, but the problem with powerlifting is like nobody goes in the same competitions anymore. Like it's all there is I, no. I WPL don't even want to watch a powerlifting movie. Well, to tell you the truth. if it was about all the right people that were competing today, and you know, when I went to uh, Vegas for the Olympia, I saw a lot of cool shit. You know, like I yeah. talked to a lot of cool people and talking to guys I'd never met before, like Chad Wesley Smith, and talking right. to uh, Chris Duffin, and all these guys are like really interesting. You're better in off own. just I think coming up with a concept and then just putting it on YouTube though. Yeah, yeah. the best so, powerlifting. All the powerlifters are on YouTube anyway. Yeah. Best yeah. powerlifting yeah. competitions, Everyone's USAPL Nationals or IPF Worlds. Yeah. That's the only one where you get the top of the top going against each other. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're huge. There's I mean, there's this Russian people. competition coming up where uh, it's Zaheer, Milan, and, and Eric. Um, but mm-hmm. that's about it. Right. And that's still, then what about Dan Green? What about Jeremy Hamilton? What, you exactly. know, you're missing yeah, you're a bunch. You're missing a lot of guys. Yeah. yeah. So. But USAPL Nationals and IPF Worlds, pretty much the best of the best show up. Yeah. Well, it should be on TV, but it's not because it's not organized into one thing. It's hard to put it on TV, you know? got to have the best competition. Uh, where can people find you or reach you or whatever? Uh, at Big Strong Fast on Instagram and um, Chris Bell on uh, Facebook. You know, they can email me at BiggerStrongerFaster at me.com if they have any uh, money. legitimate questions or want to give me money. Yeah, <laughs> or want to get involved picks. in something that I'm doing. So um, I don't mind that. I always try to answer as many people as I can. And if I can't, then uh, you end up not getting answered and getting pissed and <laughs> call me a faggot like they did to Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, get that I, sometimes. I discovered You're a pussy. I discovered my whole uh, other Facebook uh, <coughs> mailbox that I didn't Uh-oh. know was there. I had years of messages from different people, some of them um, less uh, uh, appealing than others, I'd say. <laughs> That's great. Yes. That's pretty great, though. All right. Well, I, that was my fat little brother. Hell yeah. Or older brother. I Cheap. mean. Cheap brother. Cheap fat He's uh, kind of responsible for all this. He's the one who got me into this fucking bullshit of powerlifting and the strength game. I'm uh, at Mark Smelly Bell on Instagram and Twitter. Multiply your hustle, multiply your muscle, and may all your shits be tapered. Thank you. At Silent Mike on Twitter and Instagram. And that's all. Uh, shout out to our sponsors. Compex USA at shopcompex.com. Comp- shop uh Eight man, what is eight man? Is it eight man strong? Eight man strong, I guess. Eight man strong. I'm wearing the eight man. He's wearing the strong. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks to eight man for jumping on as a sponsor and Rogue Fitness, thepowercast.com slash rogue. And am I forgetting anybody? Oh, slingshot. Uh, support you triceps in there. Support the companies that support what you like, and that give us crotch support. And we're always looking for more support. 
Yeah. Exactly. Um, what about Zortec? We can't get them. The I need sponsor Zortec, farts. farts, and uh, <laughs> Chipotle burrito. Uh-huh. And carbon infused underwear. Oh, you got to try Cafe Rio. <clears throat> I'm Jimmy DSTTV on Instagram and Twitter. Follow the show on Instagram at Mark Bell's Powercast, Facebook.com slash Super Training Gym, uh, Twitter, and um, that other thing, Periscope, uh, at S. Jim Sack, and Rob. Mark Bell's Powercast is a production of supertraining.com.